everybody. Hi, how's it going? It's Friday night here on Saving Throw, and we are rocking a full complement of people both in front of and behind the scenes tonight. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman. I am the dean of this table, and you are watching Wild Cards on Saving Throw. We will be continuing to explore the haunted and hallowed halls of academia using the East Texas University setting and playing in the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition rule set. And Slow down, guys. I'm, I'm trying to talk, but you keep making things happen on the screen. Um, That's what they do. Also, for those of you who have backed the Suede Kickstarter, uh, if you have not yet received your things, your things are probably coming soon. I uh, and and myself and JP here, we both got uh, tracking numbers for our stuff, and We're it is so excited. on the way. I so bet Dom has tracking numbers. Dom probably does too, but he's in Egypt. Um, it's yes. a terrible choice, going so, to Egypt when you were going to get your suede stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. It sucks, especially but so close to his birthday. Keep an eye out and support everybody who's excited to have gotten their things, which I say largely because because when I get my things, I want everyone to make me feel very special when I post about <laughs> it on social media. Um, so, uh, welcome tonight, guys. Uh, we are going to get started here in just a little bit, but first, we are going to meet everyone else at the table. You've already met me. Hi, Jordan Caves Callerman, but let's meet the rest of these folks. So, tonight, what I would like from you, I would like to know your name. I would like to know your character's name. And I would like to know what thing your character has done so far in college that they are most ashamed of. The character? Which thing your character has done so far in college that they are oh, most ashamed God. of. I will allow you to substitute the answer of which thing you did in college that you are most ashamed of. Whew, that's if you, a long if you would rather easier. air that dirty laundry out in front of everybody. This is much easier. Who would like to go first? Oh, man. While I write things down, who's just, someone's got to go first. I'll go first. All right, take it away. Hi, my name is Jordan Pridgen. I'm also playing Dom Zook today, so I'll be sliding back and forth, just shifting into different people and characters. That's real. Mm -hmm. That's definitely going to happen. And by that, I mean I'm never doing that. Um, but uh, I play Josh Sawyer. Uh, who is a journalism student, and the thing that what Josh... What does he go by, though? He goes by Sawyer. Oh, okay. Oh, he just goes by I didn't Sawyer. Know that. Um, I'm glad he and said it. I mm -hmm. think the thing that Josh is most ashamed of. He's called himself Josh. This, yeah, that's he did. Sawyer. The is fuck? Most, wow. But, like he gets oh. upset about other people doing it, but he's doing it. But he can do it. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Um, the thing that Sawyer is most ashamed of is uh, getting drunk and angry in front of a bunch of people at that concert. Oh yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was a freshman year uh, out outdoor concert event that yes. Sawyer attended with his his girlfriend at the time, Lori. Yeah, yeah. That was so, that was pretty embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. I'd be ashamed of that if I were Sawyer too. Probably still to this day, I'd be carrying. He's that just glad with me. that the rest of his friends don't know that it happened. That's true. I guess they don't. Uh, let's jump across the table from uh, Joshua Sawyer and his secret shame. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Grab Galati, and I play Calvin Everett Jr. And uh, the thing Calvin's probably most embarrassed about is eating those roaches. Um, you know, you think eating some roaches to get into a fraternity would be cool because you got in because you ate the roaches, but everybody knows you ate the roaches. And they, you know, word gets around, and some people are like, that's disgusting. Why did you do that? I will never make out with you. And I'm like, oh, right, yeah. That makes sense. That tracks. Yeah, it, it's because of those it's roaches. Like in the of afterglow roaches. of it, it seems more like you were on like family double dare. Yeah, than... <laughs> yeah, definitely. The thing that Calvin is most ashamed of is eating those roaches. Yes, eating those roaches because word gets around school that you ate some roaches and people don't want to be friends with you. Correct. Yeah, no one wants to be friends with Calvin anymore. But That's he, canon. Uh, but then they're like, oh, he's pretty popular, so I guess I'll be friends with him. That's also canon. Cool. All right, so next to Calvin Everett Jr., who has no real friends, but a lot of people who feel obligated to be his friend, we have... <laughs> College. Uh, hi, my name is Megan Caves, and I play Adelaide Blackwood. Um, I think that Adelaide sort of lives in a state of shame because <laughs> she's so awkward. And for her, she's like, oh my God, everything I do is, you know, she's like, she's anxious. She's but she an anxious person. She, she doesn't seem like the person who knows and is afraid of being awkward. Uh, I feel like she's proud of that. She likes like celebrating what she likes, and she wants to push against that. But she okay. doesn't like feeling like she's stepping on toes or doing, you know. It's gotcha. awkward to be awkward. It is, <laughs> um, it is awkward to be awkward. By <laughs> <laughs> definition, yeah. <laughs> 
I hope that that gets out there as a very inspirational quote. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think though, specifically, her most um, shameful moment in her mind is when she got caught drinking underage by the cops. Oh, yeah. That was pretty rough, yeah. That was, uh, it was a house party raid. That was like week three or something. Yeah, so yeah it was early on in your so college early. career and yeah. pretty much just ruined you for drinking. You haven't touched uh, any alcohol the rest of the time you've been in college, right, Adelaide? No, that's not true. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you she know. She still has a bit of a rebelliousness that she wants to the pursue. The folly of you. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for sharing that with us. And obviously, we are down one player this week. Dom Zook, who normally portrays Ron to Goth Stevens here at the table, is, as previously mentioned, traveling abroad in search of antiquities and other manner of artifacts that he can liberate and bring back. Liberate. Sl liberate. liberate them. To support them. saving throw. To support saving throw. Uh, we have a thriving trade on the black market that keeps <laughs> us uh, going. It's not That's working. not actually well. true. What is actually true is here at Saving Throw, we're an independent channel. Check out that segue. Uh, which means that we <laughs> exist and continue <laughs> thanks to the support of uh, people who enjoy what we do. So if you're having a good time tonight, if you like what you're seeing and you want to continue to support this show and other shows and uh, the explosion of content on Saving Throw that you hope to see in the future, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us. It literally helps us keep our rent paid and keep the lights on. And as a fun side effect, all cash and bit tips over 100 bits tonight go towards unlocking reward tiers, which can have sometimes very small, sometimes very large, sometimes earth-shattering effects on the campaign or the game. In order to see what those are tonight, you can enter exclamation mark unlocks and follow the link. If you need the tip link, you can enter exclamation mark tips. But be sure that you do everything relatively slowly tonight because we do not have Rick Bear behind the scenes. Instead, we have pinch hitting for tonight, the legend, the man himself, Tyler Rowe! <laughs> That's right. That's Rhodes. right. Behind the saving throw chat handle, you've got the man himself, Boring Gold Tyler, yes. uh, here in chat. So uh, go easy on him. It's been a while since he's flexed his uh, productive muscles behind the scenes, and he is trying to keep up with all of your awesomeness. Um, and, uh, and if we say trick or treat, he will throw candy at us. That's Bye. true. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. Uh, and then. Really quickly, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and thank some people now since we've got stuff off the screen. Oh, and Lean, thank you for the tip. Yay! Yay! Desk, thank you very much for the sub. Oh boy! I shoot first 13 and Escape Box Games, thank you both very thank much you. for the tip. Yay. Kira the Braid, Blargest Welp, thank you guys for the resubs. SF Giants 49er, thank you for the tip. The Bard 1971, Punk Tearing, Vampire 54, Gojira 0307, thank you guys for the resub. Heart of Handprints, thank you for the tip. Savage Clint, thank you for the resub. Hey. I notice you're not the brave little Clinster anymore, but that's okay. We still love you. <laughs> Infamous King Cupcake, Bastion Fields, I Shoot First 13, DJ Regular, Bohemian Galaxy, Mr. Tarrington, Corey D. Don, and Hallgaff, thank you all for your resubs. Be sure to let Tyler know in chat who you would like to give your points of extra credit to at the table. You can give it to any one of the players. You can give it to me, the Dean. You can give it to the table, our nice Carolina game table. Um, and that's it. Those are the those are the three places that you can choose to allocate it. Desk said in Discord that his goes to Garab. Okay. Well, fine. <laughs> uh, remind me of that when I'm handing everything out. Solid narc. Um, but before we get too much further, let's talk about some people that, that, that help us do things here at Saving Throw. And uh, the people I am referring to are, of course, Elderwood Academy, makers of fine wooden mm -hmm. game products for your table, like this one that uh, is not mine, so if I'm having problems opening it, that's why. Uh, you can find their stuff on their website if you enter the ex if you enter exclamation mark Elderwood in chat and follow that link. That is our affiliate link, so if you see anything that catches your eye, it helps us out, it helps you out, and it helps Elderwood Academy out. So and this, this isn't even like one they sent us. This is just one I bought like two years ago because they're great. They're pretty nice. It. They're pretty nice. But maybe you don't like wood. Maybe you're like, wood? No, not for me. I'm a harder person than that, in which case you need metal. You need metal gaming accessories and find other goods for your gaming table, and that means you need to check out Norse Foundry. <laughs> if you go to Norse Foundry's website, you can enter the code Saving Throw Show when you check out and save 10% off your order, but maybe, maybe wait, hold off on buying any premium dice oh. sets until the wild card's official dice get released on the North Foundry website, Yay! which should be pretty Get cool. Hyped. And we're very excited about those. Yeah. Or, you know, treat yourself now and then treat yourself later on too. Who knows? 
I mean, I don't know your life. Get yourself some dice. Yeah. You deserve it. If you want to be the hardest person, that's the dice you want to get. Trust and then me. finally, our <laughs> friends over at Carolina Game Tables are in the midst of running a Kickstarter right now for their new 5x5 five five game table that uh, is different than our table. Ours is the streamer game table. This is a game table for all occasions, and they have it up on Kickstarter right now. You should check them out. They are a great company and a great group of people, and we can say from experience, they make a pretty good gaming table. So you can enter exclamation mark Kickstarter in the chat and follow the link to check out their Kickstarter and see if it's something you would like to support, because uh, they've always been very supportive of us. So uh, it's... Let's, let's return the favor. Uh, thank you very much, Thantos80, for the tip. Yeah, really appreciate thank you. It. And uh, is that it? Is there anything else we need to address up top, guys? Mm, no, no, that's it. Well, then I guess that having been said. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Wow, we messed up hard. Students, <laughs> We've all class is in session. You may now put your glasses back on. I'm supposed to be the one not following the rules here? We're, let's pretend this is like an old school ABC 3D night. Glasses on, everyone. <laughs> Elias Nyber, thank you very much for the tip. Thank you. Let's hand out some bennies to everyone, shall we? Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Now, I will remind <laughs> the students that there is still a legend chip up oh, for grabs right. yeah. in this bag of Benny. Usable just like it is in the Deadlands campaign world. So uh, why don't we start week. over here, three bennies to Joshua Sawyer. Get All it. right. Get it. One, two, three. I didn't get a legend chip! Three wow. normal bennies, that's okay. Hey, Adelie Blackwood, you get four oh, on account of your exam results. Come on, Eddie, come on, Eddie, come on, Eddie. There's two that are not it. There's okay. two of them, not it. These two, however, will be! It's no, not they're not also it. not it. Oh, man, you have the best chance. Calvin Everett Jr., Here you we get, get three. Let get me it. get those chippies, baby. Uh, I think this is three. Regular bennies. Wow, wow. Three regular bennies. Oh, better luck next time, you guys. Can't so who knows? It. Maybe you'll get a joker. You can't have it. Right? I get four. That's right. I cannot have it. Okay, good. Just but don't, don't worry. I didn't draw it. One, two, three, and four. And let's go ahead and draw for that curse, Adam. There's what only what three players here, though. What do you, oh, yeah, you're right. Hey! Yeah, you knock, knock, for knock, one. knock, knock. I only get three. That's Why right. I assume you did that last week, too. <laughs> I probably did. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Adelaide you didn't think about it. <laughs> Blackwood. <laughs> yes. Let us see what curse you will be affected with this oh week. Oh my god. Draw goodness. a card. Stinky, Seal your fate. Stinky. Stinky. I, I, I think that one's not on the new list. Which no, we it, say it, every time. I Jack thought it was. Jack. I, of I think spades. we keep telling you it's not, and it is. Scott Thulu, thank you very thank much you, for the tip. Thank you, Scott. Hey. Great news. Uh oh. Technology completely no. fails this session. Yay! See, anti technology hindrance. All right, so uh, Adelaide, you are once again having a very negative effect on any nearby electronics. If you could be so kind, go ahead and pull out that East Texas University source book that we always keep on each side of the table and uh, go ahead and bookmark the uh, anti-technology hindrance table because you might need that. You so might you might. you need rather that. be stinky? You know you guys I have one? Not. Personally, I think this one. More interesting. Uh, uh, no, we They normally... just didn't pull a studio copy. Yeah, oh, fair enough. But that's okay. They got you. TV. All right. Now that that has been on, taken nervous. care of, let's talk about what happened last week. Last week, Calvin was busy helping Glenn Mack shoot a project for class that Glenn Mack was in no way excited to help with, and from the sounds of it, neither was Calvin. Yet, that is what they were doing. In the meantime, the other three, apparently, attempted a ritual the night before, having no memory of it, woke up in the wrong body. Uh, Sawyer was currently inhabiting Adelaide's body, Adelaide was inhabiting Ron's body, and Ron was, of course, inhabiting Sawyer's body. They didn't really have time to figure all of that out because each of them had a very pressing appointment they had to go to. Of course, they couldn't go to it themselves since they were not themselves, so instead they had to try as quickly as they could to coach their friends on how, it, how they could possibly get through a pitch for uh, some new episodes for a TV show for Sawyer, uh, some football practice that was very, very important for Ron, and an English presentation for Adelaide. Somehow, all of them managed to succeed really well. Even Adelaide, as Ron, managed to do okay before a last minute flub, a last yeah. minute flub kind of, kind of put the final nail in the coffin for Ron. But after that, they were able to piece together what had happened. They went 
to the sanctuary, which they have been using as a semi uh, base of operations since Adelaide now works at Maryland's used bookstore, and found that Lauren had also participated in the ritual and had her mind switched with that of a rat. They were able to find both the rat and Lauren and get Sonia Alvarez, mm. the head of the secret res of the um, nope special reserves <laughs> secret uh, section. Reserve. Sorry, I was distracted secret by all reserves. the things coming in. So many things uh, to help them undo the ritual and. Thanks to the uh, the alumni association as well, learn a new ritual themselves. They were given the ritual that Sonia used in order to undo what had been That's done. Nice. But was that, that was last time. Again? What was that ritual called? It was like the undo button ritual. She didn't give it a name, but that is she. She explained it as kind of like a reset button I, if you screw things up. I wrote down "oops ritual" in my notes, and <laughs> I was oops. like, "What is "oops ritual"? Oh my god! Oops all rituals. I mean, I'm calling it the "oops ritual." <laughs> um, some red shirt and civil savage eight eighty. Thank you guys for the resub. Thank you. Illuvial. Thank you for the sub and welcome. Etu Sirket. Akimboto, Akimboto and hi. Shadow Radiant, thank you guys for the subs and resubs. And Elias Neighbor, thank you very much for the tip. Thank you, Thanks, Elias. Thank you. Those are from SF Giants 49. Uh, Gifted oh, subs. Oh, and thank, thank you, you, SF Giants, thank for you. gifting those. And the rest of you, welcome to the community. Yeah, be sure and let oh, yeah. um, let us know in chat who you would like to give those points it, of extra it credit to. It is too. September, too, so half off all new subs. That's right. That's right. It That's is September. Good point. resub, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. But we let's... still get the full amount. Let's jump into this, guys. I believe we have some a shots. Mm. Ooh, People bought us some shots. Everyone raise those red solo cups and keep them way the hell up, because we got a lot. From Owen Lean. Let's all take a moment to think how lucky it was that Calvin wasn't present last session, and therefore, nobody woke up with Barrett. Oh, <laughs> raise them up true. and chug! Yeah. Thank you very how much, Owen Lean. That been? Um, from Ted and Aaron of Escape Box Games. To getting our gorgeous suede box and all of the shinies contained therein. Mm. Now to stunt, now to start hunting the wild autographs for our book. We're looking at you, Clinton Jody. Also, hashtag break the Dinas. Whoa, that that does not sound good written out loud, but we'll take it anyway. <laughs> Raise them up and chug. Thank you very much. Chug. Escape box game. Being racing your class a lot. J Matthews eighty five bought us a shot. Gonna... Wife and I finished designing our dream house today. Five month build and 30 years of payments, and it will be all ours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Raise him up and chug. chug. You're living the American oh, yeah. dream. Clink. Jay Matthews, God bless you. Um, from Lady Imago Happy Friday. Time to get drunk. Hell yeah. Raise him up and chug. chug. Thank you very much, Lady Imago. Fractured Avatar 13 bought us a shot. Last week was Freaky Friday, ETU. What will this week bring? Throwback Thursday? Massacre Monday? Oral Wacky Wednesday? Good luck, guys. Raise them up and chug! Yeah. Thanks very much. Fractured Avatar 13. X Diana Moon bought us a shot. Hashtag protect Dennis society. <laughs> <laughs> Raise them up and chug! Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, Thank Dennis appreciates your protection, Diana Moon. Okay, this shot is from Geraldo, and I have been informed that I need to do this in the voice of the dean's assistant. Uh, okay. I do not have an assistant that I am aware of. Uh, oh, wait, the unless... Character. Who's, who, which character it's is It's that the guy dean's? who's like always like, the dean's the guy who's always talking, right? No, it's We're President Nelson. Nelson. President, oh, Nelson. President Nelson's that, assistant. That assistant okay. is what I was thinking. Okay, uh, Dear students, uh, me and my assistant have switched bodies. If you have switched bodies, <laughs> please report to the main office to report if not, please refer all questions to Professor Glenn Mack. <laughs> Raise them up and chug! chug! Thank you very much, Geraldo. <laughs> Apparently there's a rash of this going around campus. Mm. <laughs> Elias Nyber bought us a shot. With help from Glenn Mack, Director of Strategic Task Operators of the Paranormal, AKA STOP, the incredible Nikki, Nikki Tolk, and Iron Cal's girlfriend from another dimension, Liv Widow. <laughs> they protect Pinebox from the evil Dr. M. Carvinch. Dr. M. <laughs> Avengers, Cossemble. Cossemble. Raise it up and chug. Yeah, Cossemble. Thank you very much to That's... Elias Sniper, and thank you very much to As Like a Narnian for the tip. We appreciate it. Thank you, As Like a Narnian. And Elias, that's 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 getting pretty intricate. Yeah, wow. I like yeah. this alternate universe. Yeah, really, that's really cool. getting intricate. All right, we got another uh, shot coming in, but in the meantime, let's hand out some points of extra Yay! credit for the evening. Okay. Largest Whelp would like to give one point of extra credit to the table. Yay! Yay thank yes. you. Gojira 0307 would like to give one to Adelaide. Oh, thank Yay. you. 
Yes. The infamous King Cupcake would like to give one to me, the Dean. Dean ah, Dean. Thank you. DJ Regular would like to give one to Adelaide. Thank you, DJ. Uh, Bohemian Galaxy would like to give one to Sawyer. Yay, thank mm. you. Bastion Fields would like to give one point of extra credit to whoever does the best Jopper impression. Who's that? Huh? That was, that no, was, was uh, Boren Gold's yeah. ty <laughs> old, yeah. old uh, Barky's Brigade character, right? Lost yeah. Brigade? Oh. I have no Barky's idea. Brigade? Barky's Brigade? Yeah. Okay, so everyone, do your best Jopper impression. You go. Yeah, this is up to you. Guys. I'm doing Jopper. This is probably something Tyler would do. All right, I like it. <laughs> Jopper. Oh, man. I, his other type of character. I'm Jopper. That's funny, he does. He adjusts his glasses and then goes, <laughs> I'm Chopper. All right, Chopper. Uh, oh, it's me, Chopper. I'm pretty sure this is what he sounds like, but a little gruffer. Am I right, Tyler? Yeah, I got it. I got it. All right, and this point of extra credit is going to go to Idris Elba over here. <laughs> All right. It's closer, though. It's closer. I'm Black Superman. Uh, Vampire54 <laughs> would like to give two points of extra credit to somebody when something happens. Somebody. Uh, so, Tyler, pop, pop, if you could please. Pop. Keep that one up, please. Squeak. Um, and Dumb. two points of extra credit to another person when something happens. I love Ron. Where's Ron? I shoot first 13 would like to give a point of extra credit to Adelaide. Oh, thank you. Uh, Thantos80 would like to give a point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Wayne. Dean. Uh, Mr. Tarrington would like to give a point of extra credit to Sawyer. Hey, thank you. Thantos80 would like to give another point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Oh. Dean Lee. I'll take it. Uh, uh, Tyler wrote it down, so that means it's real. Some red shirt would like to give a point of extra credit to Adelaide. Thank you. And Civil Savage 880 would like to give a point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Aline. Dean Aline. Thank you. Dean. Uh, and let's see. Uh, oh, this other shot came in. Everyone raise your red solo cups. As like a Narnian bodice shot, this shot, like all of my other shots, is for Dennis. <laughs> raise him up and chug! Thank you very much, As like a Narnian. Everybody likes Dennis. Long may he reign. <laughs> All right, so now that those have been handed out, you know, before we jump in, let's go ahead and just, we've got some unlocks here. Let's, let's, let's deal with them, let's deal with them. Deal with we've unlocked the first story reward tier, which is called Flipsies. Flipsies. <gasps> Flipsies. Well, hey, Flipsies. does anybody want an extra Benny? Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah? Okay. Well, then why don't we do this? You all go ahead and flip a point of extra credit or a Benny. If it's heads, actually, here's what I'll do. We'll make it easier. Okay. I'm going to flip a coin. Uh-oh. The part that has the number on it is heads. If it comes up heads, you all get an extra Benny. Cool. If it comes up tails, you all give me one no, of your bennies. I don't want to do that. Don't worry, thing. though. You can spend points of extra credit to reflip this coin. Okay. That seems bad. That seems really good. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, yeah, but who's going to be the person who spins the extra credit? I'll do it. This is what the <laughs> Alumni Association have gotten for you. Are you guys ready? We just right. we see one heads and we're good. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Set? Heads, go. Maybe let's do it. If we get a tails though first, do we lose? It's heads! Yay! Yay! Everybody gets an extra Benny. Yay! I'd like to reflip it. <laughs> no! All right. <laughs> Dude, Sawyer, still heads. Draw a Benny from the Alumni Association. Come on, where and are you luck. at? Differently. Oh, that's nope, it. you get a regular one. Adelaide. Oh, Give it, tell me. No, it's not. It's got, it says ETU on it. Want that sweet tea? Ta nope, that's regular. Want that sweet Here you go. I just want the regular chip. Calvin. I really want the Leggin chip. Leggin? Yeah, that's what's pronounced. Well, good Leggin. news. The Megan chip. <laughs> we have also the unlocked. Draw! Uh, yeah, it's a draw. Good, Megan. good job, Megan. Megan. Good job. She peaked. She did well this time. All right, and that draw is going to uh, Sawyer. Yay! So draw a card from the official uh, previous Savage Worlds adventure deck. My new d adventure deck is on its way. Oh boy! Whoa. Can't wait to see that. I got villainous verbosity. Ha ha! You fools! Did you really think you could thwart such an ingenious plan? Play to make an opposing wild card lose his next action by gloating or talking about his master plan. Wow! Okay. That's good. That is a good one. That's it's good. always fun for me it's when you guys good. get to do that. And we've mm -hmm. unlocked the conviction of youth. Youth! 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 youth. You. The conviction of youth this evening will go to Adelaide Blackwood. Yay! Adelaide, you may spend, you may add that D6 die to any one roll that you make tonight. So full of vigor. We have also unlocked the cheat token for the table. Cheat. cheat. That can be used as an extra table Benny or to get a hint or a clue about what is going on from me during the events of tonight's game. And we've unlocked a second draw. Ah. Draw. No, you can't get another. You can't get another one. This draw goes to 
Really? I still never believe him when he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you not believe Adelaide him? Adelaide Blackwood. Adelaide Blackwood, draw. Because <laughs> he does it to me all the time. If he fakes it out and you get the card out of the box before he's able to remove that's it, true. it's I yours. Have, yeah, that's true. What'd you get? Cat now. Uh, play when a character has at least half hour, a half hour of undisturbed downtime to restore a, a character as if she had a full night's rest. So it restores power points, removes fatigue. Yes, it does. I get all my power points back. And uh, you guys have never suffered from fatigue of any kind, oh so God. that doesn't no. sound super useful. Oh I mean, it's God. not like we start. It's not like I start most sessions with one <laughs> point of fatigue at least. That's right. We have also unlocked. The rest of the reward tier. What? We have unlocked guys. a taste of what's to come, which will happen Do later. Do we get on. to eat something? No. Ew. And Why we have unlocked you? the final it's reward tier for tonight: the Dennis Protection Society. Wait, what? there's really a Dennis Protection Society? Oh my god. And as per my promise, Alumni Association, since you have unlocked the Dennis Protection Society, I solemnly swear <laughs> that next week during the season finale of Wild Cards. No harm shall come to Dennis. After that, though, uh, it's anybody's guess. <laughs> wow. But for one week, um, you get to protect him. What if... So enjoy it. We kill Dennis. Yeah. Uh, all, right, all right, study group, that's we've got goal. a new plan. Yeah. We've got to kill Dennis. <laughs> oh, Dennis kid is weird, man, I'm telling you. But you he's God, so he could keep us from killing Yeah, let's Dennis. see what happens when God tries to stop us from killing Dennis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, uh, and before we get started, since we have a couple other things we here, let's go ahead and until he dies. hand out this extra credit. <laughs> Illuvial would like to give a point of extra credit to whoever currently has the least. I think I it's have one. Calvin. I have two. I have Calvin. Two. All right. One point of extra credit. credit. I'll take it. And Punk Tearing would like to give one point of extra credit to Calvin. All right. Bah. <laughs> that bah. Great. But they came in in that order, so that's the way <laughs> the cookie crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all of that out of the way. Let's uh, let's jump into tonight's game. But really quickly, I have to remind you that there are still oh, two mystery box cards goodness. that have not yet been triggered that are on the table, and there are more mystery box cards in the mystery box. That I'm could exempt be drawn. for those because I wasn't here when those were drawn. Incorrect. Two mystery boxes. We can handle that. Nope. Sorry, can't jump in. There's one more thing we have to do from last week. Go. Oh. From last week because the alumni association unlocked uh, three Joker Monty. <gasps> so one of well, you is going one. to get a chance to play three Joker Monty. Well, and Garav already said that he's immune to things that happened last week. No, so. it's okay. We're going to roll him in <laughs> anyways. All right, you are 1-2, you are 3-4, you are 5-6. It's a 2. Yay! Josh Sawyer. What's 3 Joker Monty? I want to know. 3 Joker Monty? Why? It's only the best and most fun game that you can totally win. Uh, I would like to show you, okay. Josh. There is a 2 of hearts. Mm -hmm. There is a Joker. Yeah. And there is a... Two of clubs. All right. That's a bad two for a dramatic task. So uh, here they are on the table. Uh, I know you guys can't see this, but just trust just trust me when I say that I'm about to to Monty this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna full Monty this. Can, can I go sit on the other side? Uh, you want to sit on the other side? Yeah, I want to sit. Like, well, then here. they won't be able to see you at all. Yeah, they you can't guys see, your, see me here. They can't see your face. No. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean you're super visible. Am I? Just you know what? Just sit in your chair. Just sit in your, your chair should Wait, be fine. You can totally see me here. But they can't see anyone else. Yes. As like oh, a Narnia. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much for the tip. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and stay there? All right. All right so uh, it's a weird angle. Joker's here in the middle, right? Yep. Okay. Let's uh, Thank you. let's play some some three Joker Monty. All right. Just just follow the Joker. Just follow the Joker. Follow the lady, the Joker here. Just wherever she is, wherever she's going. That's what we're wanting to watch. Oh, there's the two. That's the two. You don't want to watch that's no. You want the Joker. You want the Joker, definitely. Not the two, not the two. Just the Joker. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? Oh, what happens if I if I do one of those? If I do one of those, oh, what do you got? What do you wait, got? That's just bullshit. Here we go. Here we it's a game you can totally win, you guys. It's totally a game you can win. Here's how this works. You take one of these cards. You do not reveal what it is. You keep it face down. Later on, if you are dealt a card for any reason, you can choose to substitute the card that you have. Okay. But really quickly, let me just shuffle them up a little bit more. Okay. Oh. Pick your card. Listen. Okay, do not look at it. Do not look at it. Keep it face down. Oh, okay. So at some point in the future, I need to be like, oh, I hope I got it right. Yeah. And flip it. It's either going to be a two or it's going to be a joker. All right. Well. And not some point in the future. You have to use it tonight or it is lost. Sure, sure. All right, three Joker Monty on the mm. table. All of the extra credit unlocked. Uh, 
Uh, I really want to know what it is. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's get started. Do not look at it. If you look at it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking at it. If I you would, look at it, your life is forfeit. That would be... <laughs> it's like Sawyer dies. Yeah. No, Sawyer no, he dies. Sorry, no, I meant you. Uh, I meant you. Wait, okay. can, can you show it to chat while we close our eyes? Nope. They okay. can find out with the rest of us. Okay. So, it's been a couple weeks since, uh, I don't want to blow anyone's mind, but it's been a couple weeks <laughs> since, our, since our last session. Uh, since the events of that, uh, that uh, particularly Freakish Friday. Um, Calvin's back uh, from, from helping Glenn Mack with his project. It sounds uh, like it went super well and super boring. And um, you guys have been in the midst of trying to do more research on that strange map on the wall of the sanctuary, the one that had all of the different colored lines stretched out all over Pine Box that all seemed to converge in a point over what you realized is now the modern day burn. However, any of you who have been helping try and figure out what is going on with, with that map and what it might signify, go ahead and make me a research roll. I'm not doing this on the internet. You're not doing it on the internet? Fine. <laughs> what are you doing it on? Books. Local books that have been written about Pine Box. So that means she gets a minus? Give me a research at a minus two. Oh, fine, I do it online. You do it online? Yeah. All right, this actually happens before your anti-technology. <laughs> <laughs> Megan. Oh. Well, what? I didn't want. Oh, whew. Didn't well, know. that was oh. almost a crit fail, but it ain't. OK, good. Let's make it a crit fail. They're fail. both spending extra credit to reroll. <gasps> oh, she almost oh crit failed, too. All right, I got an eight. I've got an lots eight? of bennies. OK, all right. Adelaide's spending <laughs> a benny to reroll, because she's got so many. Yay. There it is. Uh, seven. A seven? Yes. So we got a success and a success with a raise. Hooray! Here is what you all were able to discover. So you know about the burn. A big area in the middle of the big thicket that is just barren for some reason. However, in your investigations, you were able to find information from the time period that the burn uh, first showed up. Interestingly, on February 28th, 1953, there was no burn. But... On February 29th, 1953, something happened, and it was like overnight, a one mile diameter area in the big thicket was reduced to ash and leveled. There was nothing there. All life had been extinguished, just ash coated the ground. Um, there were a lot of theories about this right off the bat. Investigators, of course, were sent out to try and figure out what was going on, but found no hot spots or any other sign of fire, and were able to rule that out almost immediately. But that was some pretty strange business to be going on in, uh, in Pine Box, and people started coming up with their own theories about what was going on. Uh, some people thought it might have something to do with a crashed alien spaceship. Others uh, thought that, you know, maybe it was a, a secret government experiment or, or some other, you know, strange, spooky thing. But what became even weirder was after time, it became clear that no life was going to return to the burn. Even a state forestry service initiative to replant that area only ended with 500 dead saplings in that part of the earth. Somehow that area is just not capable any longer of supporting life. As a result of that, it has been declared off limits by the Forest Service to anyone, except for those who get special permission from the Forest Service itself to investigate. Um, you, Sawyer, learned all of that as well, helping Adelaide do some research. You also learned that there is a professor on campus who has been granted such access to the burn. He is an ecology professor by the name of Dr. Barton, and he runs a once a semester ecological field trip for any students who are interested in learning more about the burn, uh, and takes students out into the area and gives them a tour, has them assist him with his scientific uh, data gathering, and uh, it becomes like this overnight sort of thing. So you learned that the next one of those is coming up in a couple days, actually. And you all planned, why not? We've got this opportunity. We know something weird is going on in this sure. space. Um, you also have realized in the intervening time where, the, where those lines converge on the map is in the middle of what is called the burn now. Um, so might mm -hmm. be worthwhile seeing if there's something at the convergence of all of those lines. 
Ron was going to go with you guys. You had all signed up to, uh, to go on this overnight camping trip, and Ron was signed up as well. However, he got a weepy call from his father uh, mm -hmm. last night, and um, it sounded pretty bad. He was on the phone for a while, even though, you know, uh, he's not really supposed to be on his phone for that long, because I think he has to still pay by the minute for that, for that phone. Cool. Ooh, boy. And his dad is in a rough spot. Uh, his dad has been kicked out of the compound, and his dad just needed some support. So Ron is going to spend uh, the next couple days this weekend trying to make his dad feel better about the, the downturn that his life has experienced. So Ron had to bow out at the last minute, but you guys are still signed up for it. You guys can still make it. You're gonna go camping. There's just a couple things you need. Uh, you were told by the, uh, by, Dr. Barton's information, once you signed up, uh, was that you need to bring hiking supplies, you need to bring camping gear, and <laughs> you need to bring food for an overnight trip. So, uh, that being tomorrow, what are you guys wanting to do? Well, we need to go and get all these supplies. We, we should be prepared. We should make sure we give ourselves plenty of time. Yeah, I mean, have you guys, like, actually spent much time camping? Uh, um, that was not really something my family liked to do, but I did go with some friends when I was a kid. But I was never a part of, like, putting all the supplies together. Well, I, I mean, what do we need? Like, like those big backpacks people carry around? Or, or a tent? Or, that's just all, uh... Make sure that you treat your clothes for ticks. Oh. Is there a lot of ticks in the area, or...? Uh, yeah, Big Thicket's known for having a lot of ticks, and you guys don't want to get Lyme disease, right, Josh? No. Yeah, no, we don't want to get Lyme disease. But we also don't yeah. want to bring any ticks home on your clothes that might get into your roommate's clothes. Well, not as And then spread about Lyme that, disease. Eh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that's too much of a concern. Either way, we just need whatever... I mean, we're only going to be there for what, like a, a night? Yeah, sounds yeah. sounds like you guys are yeah. planning for a cool trip. Um, listen, we've talked about how you can't really have these these little meetings in in the room Randy, anymore. You know, and we've talked about how it's his room too. He can have friends over, man. Right, he can have friends over. That is in the bylaws. However, in uh, Randy, the section Randy, on you wrote these bylaws, and I. Told you I, I didn't want to go by them. You signed off on them. I did not Josh, sign off on them. You came home late from a party one night and I presented you the bylaws and I believe your um, words were, sure, fuck it, I just want to go to sleep. So Randy, I can produce your signature. That would not hold up in like court though. Like if you really want to go that way because he was clearly like under duress or not, I, that I mean you can't. Well, the, the, you no can't go to court for this shit. I, you can't take him to court I, no I matter what. That's not the point. I would I, I would I'm thrill at the saying, chance to represent myself in a court of law. Oh, okay, but I'm saying that you're not following like basic. I'm just saying I think you should let it go. Well, that's a fair point, Adelaide. My counterpoint is I am trying to study. And you guys are talking about going camping. Well, so, there's lots of study spaces available in the university. There are, but very few of them contain my desktop computer, which I need to render uh, this project. However, yeah. I would also say there's lots of spaces around campus where you guys could talk about camping. Well, there's really nothing that means about this conversation that would indicate it has to be happening here in uh, Randy and Josh's Yeah, but pad. you see, it's my room, and I want to do things in my room with my friends, so... Well, Joshua, it's our room. But uh, headphones? Hmm? H headphones. I don't well, like them. They, they chafe my ears. Yeah. different kinds. Randy? Well, they chafe the outside there's of the my ears. There's the ones that connect to your bone. Randy, with the R room... But he's cheap With the there. R room argument, I'm not the one asking you to leave. You're the one who keeps asking me to leave, so it sounds like you think it's your room and I'm staying here, and that's wrong. Well, that's just no, 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 no. confirmation it's wrong. bias. Well, I'll point out here in the paperwork that you signed, All right. your hours are clearly defined on Wednesdays you know and Thursday evenings, whereas my hours are clearly defined. Do you want to do this in a court of law? Do you want to do this in a court what? of law? No, hey, yo, whoa, whoa, no. whoa, chill. Hey, Look, man, I know no, we've no, got to no. do this, no, 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 it's but fine. I'm writing him up and taking it to the RA. What? No, that is so lame. Yeah, no. Look at this, these, these, these documents he's trying to force on me. He sprayed me with vinegar. What? The other day. Well, yeah. you were going through my no. drawers, and I you did warn you I would spray you Randy, with vinegar. I have realized why you had housing problems before, and it's super clear. All right? 
So I'm going to bring you up with the RA unless you just chill. If you can just be a reasonable person for the next not that long that we have to live together here, then everything will be fine. Well, but if you really want to represent yourself legally, then by all means, keep acting like you're acting. Sorry, I didn't realize you were so passionate about the issue. Can you define for me what a reasonable amount of time we have together is? The end of this year. It's quite a ways. Well, you're free Finals to seek... Finals are coming up. You're free to seek somewhere else to live. You've done it before. And you did sign these documents. <laughs> yeah. And I did get them notarized. Mm-hmm. And is that notari notary uh, witnessing it? Because I don't remember signing those documents, which sounds to me like I was not in a fit state of mind to uh, sign anything legally. Well, I guess we'll just have to see what the RA thinks about it. I guess we will, won't we? I guess we'll <clears throat> just both submit our, our own versions of the events to the RA. Yeah, yeah. So Let's I'm probably it. gonna need some time to type mine up. So I think in that case, it sounds like you guys need to go buy some camping supplies. Oh, man. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm gonna continue to be in my room like is my right to do. All right, sorry, you so. can stay here, but I'm out. This guy is killing my vibe. I'm, I'm gonna right. go talk to Keith and maybe get some... Fine, uh, I'm leaving, Randy, you but know. it's not because of you. All right. <laughs> Noted. All right, so you guys are leaving? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. But not because of Randy. No. The professor, thank you very much for the tip. Thanks, the professor. 100% thank you. leaving because of Randy. You know, it's really his problem. It's not like anything with you. He's just a jerk. Yeah, but his problem becomes my oh. problem when I have to live with him. Oh, I know, I'm not saying, I'm just like, it has nothing to do with you. He's thank you. He's just a big jerk. Thank you. You just can't argue with some people, man. Just don't, no. don't even try, man. All right, so what are you guys going to do? Uh, camping supplies. You're gonna buy some camp. What do you? Why are you? Yeah, camping why are you pointing supplies. at your? Did you paper? not read that from upside? I, I can't. Uh, you guys are gonna buy some camping supplies. Uh, Maybe. And also drugs. Uh, I'm sorry. What? I'm gonna bring some drugs on this camping trip. You're so. And, and I just want to be clear. You're still buying drugs from Keith. Why wouldn't I be? Um, because Keith for a while was selling drugs that made uh, some sort of demonic entity chase you down and He's not selling uh, those drugs anymore. That you Still, know of. That Does it know like of. leave you thinking he's super reliable as a drug dealer? Look, you go camping, you bring some drugs. That's what you do, okay? It is? Yeah. Look, yeah. I you don't, don't know, have to man. do the drugs. I Look, can do all the drugs. Calvin, this place seems pretty dangerous to me. What? It's yeah. a campsite. What are we talking about? No, what we're do you going mean? To the burn, though. Yeah, but like everything that we've found out is going on around here. It all seems to be centered around this. I don't think we can afford to not be there. All right, I'll just bring a little drugs. Okay, but you you keep that for yourself then. I mean, I'm only bringing a little. Of course, it's for myself at that point. Okay. All right. So you guys are buying some camping supplies. Yeah. Uh, you have to bring food. Uh, for the overnight trip, uh, is that the kind of thing that you guys would already have in your dorms? Travelable food for this, or is that something you're gonna have to buy as well? That's the sort of thing Ron would probably have. That's true, but Ron is not here. Adelaide might have a little bit, but she'd probably buy one. Okay, and then uh, you guys are also going to buy uh, some drugs. So, uh, <laughs> he's buying drugs. The little bit of drugs are gonna set you back forty bucks. Uh, okay. I assume you're, I, I assume you're buying uh, some some marijuana from Keith. Yes. Okay, yeah, forty bucks for that. Um, the camping gear, are you guys going in on a tent, or are you guys each buying your own individual tent? I mean, we could split a tent, because we could probably use a tent. We could get a, like, six-person tent, and then that would fit, like, all four of us anytime we needed to, like, live like Nikita or and something. And some room, and some room, yeah. Those things are yeah. expensive, though. So, I guess it would probably go by what's available. Okay. We could, like, those little one-person tents are usually, like, pretty, like, They're one- or two-person tents are... They, they can be cheap, yeah. Um, and, and Pine Box, uh, because it's so close to the Big Thicket, which is a huge recreational outdoor area, there, there are definitely a few places in town that do sell uh, your various and sundry outdoorsman needs. Um, so you do have access to pup tents. You also have access to a, uh, a larger tent that can sleep all of you. No. The pup tents, no. I'm going to say, are 25 bucks a piece. The larger six-person tent, that one's 125 uh, go big or go home, I say. 
Big I'm, tent. I'm fine getting the big one. All right. I mean, it might be nice to have a place that we can kind of <clears throat> get away from everybody else if yeah. we have to. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so right now we're at 125 can plus we, 40, that's 165. Can we get a discount for 120 to make it an even three-way split? No, um, but you haven't finished buying all the things that you need yet. Oh, there's more, right, yeah, yeah. You okay, need, cool. You need um, that uh, food for the evening, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and I think if you guys are frugal and... and uh, Just two meals, right? Uh, yeah, basically, so we'll say 25 snaps. bucks altogether what if for we everybody. Get lost and stuck and we're like stuck out there for like a week? Then we need food and water I'm, for... I'm not carrying a week's worth of food around my back. I'm saying we can carry, like, you know, when, you, uh, when we get the hiking supplies, they also tend to have, like, those ration things. Uh, I, I think if we get stuck out there for a week, we have bigger problems. Yeah, that's true. Then water? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Orp the Gripply, thank you very much for the tip. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think at this point we're at $190. Total. Total. Sure. Wait, you count the drugs in that? Yep. No, count the drugs separate for me. Okay. So 150 total. 150 50, total. 50 bucks each and 40 for me. Okay, so 50 bucks each and then an extra 40 from Calvin There's to get his uh, his primo hookup from Keith. 90 <laughs> doll hairs, baby. Uh, Keith. going to be real sad. Keith is holding. Keith has what you, uh, what you want. He always does. Yes, he does. And sometimes he has way more than you bargained for. <laughs> Um, okay, so with all of that done, you guys have your tent. Um, you could purchase sleeping bags as well, but you guys also have blankets and pillows and stuff, so you could just roll those it's up into be a bag. Hot anyway. It is going to be hot. We are heading into the into the very midst of East Texas summer, so hot. yeah, it's not going to cool off at night or anything like that. That's for the week. Okay. Uh, we want to bring any other. Uh, we're bringing our tasers, right? We want to bring those. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I mean, we should be prepared. Um, we should, like, maybe we can bring some of the stuff for this oops ritual. The what? Well, what did that take? That took, like, river water and a, a chicken foot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Maybe well, there's some of those things at the, um, in the, the sanctuary. Well, chicken feet you can get at the market, I'm pretty sure, right? Probably. No, you know for a fact the uh, items that are still usable in the sanctuary, uh, you have a list of those, and none of them are chicken feet or river water. Okay, well, it was just a thought. We don't necessarily have to do it, but... Didn't you get river water in your mouth um, yeah. last time? Yes. Okay. What? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> she didn't have a bottle, so she got it with her mouth. Well, I kind of said it as a joke, and then you made it happen, so... <laughs> well, don't say things as jokes that I find funny. <laughs> All right, so are you guys, so you're bringing your tasers. Yeah. Anything else that you're bringing? Uh, uh, I'm gonna bring a baseball bat. A baseball bat? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a baseball bat? Um, no. All right, so that's gonna cost <laughs> you some money probably. First aid kit, flashlight, pepper spray. I have pepper spray, I'm gonna bring that. Okay. Cell phone. Uh, I think a, a decent bat probably set you back like 30 bucks. None of that metal shit. I want that wood. Yeah, you got it, man. That good, good wood. It's a Louisville Sligger. Ooh, what? Sligger? Yeah, well, it's not a full, like, it's it's kind of like an off-brand uh, bat, but, you know, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's going to be good. <laughs> you thought it was a Louisville Slugger when you got it, and you read it, and you're like, what the? That's an eye? <laughs> what did they make How? An eye? And why? All right, so anything else you guys need? I would also probably like to bring some sort of, like, small thing that could be used as a weapon. Okay. Could I, like, <laughs> borrow Ron's hatchet? Um, that depends. No. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of a time that Ron has been somewhere and been like, I don't have my hatchet, and yeah. I can't think of one. <laughs> so he took it with, his, with him to uh, console his dad. Maybe they'll just strike out into the wilderness and build a fire together or something. Who knows? Uh, so you can't take Ron's hatchet. I will bring a hammer. That is ostensibly for hammering in stakes of the uh, of the tent of the tent. What so is it really for? That's like a mallet. It's, I mean, it is also for that. <laughs> okay, okay. But it's also having a hammer in case I need to hit anything. Did it's you made are, for play doh? Did you it already have work. a hammer? Probably not. Then probably ten bucks for a hammer. I think go, from the bucks. hardware store. All right. Now I'll hammer in the morning. Yeah, and <laughs> you can hammer in the evening as well, or all over the big thicket. Sure. Where, anything else? Anything else, guys? Anything else you can think oh, of? Got my bag, got know. my drugs, I'm good. You're all making right. Adelaide nervous. I am? Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not. Benny later, don't worry about it. You guys, then, 
have a whole Friday night ahead of you before <gasps> you have to get up early mm -hmm. and uh, and meet up for this Saturday morning uh, rendezvous. So, um, you guys gonna just relax, chill, try and turn in early, get some rest so you can be ready for your big day of camping? No. No? Mm -mm. You funning me? I am mm -mm. funning you. Mm -mm. You know what? Now seems like a good time for some shots. Okay. Raise some red solo cups, guys. Uh, since you guys are partying tonight, let's all party. From Geraldo, wait a minute. Dennis is safe next week, but does the Dean's promise extend to tonight's episode as well? Raise him up and chug! chug. Oh, Thanks very much, I, I Geraldo. Don't... Think he's going. Yeah, we, we <laughs> went to Ron's room to get Ron, and Dennis is there like, all right, you gotta come with us. The professor <laughs> bought us a shot. Narc time, Calvin, did you pass your exams? Uh, uh, yes, he did. We rolled off camera. Calvin passed his exams with flying colors and got the uh, teacher's pet result for his mer hmm. midterms. So let's raise him up and <laughs> chug to the teacher's pet, Calvin Everett Jr. Thank you. And Orp the Gripply bought us a shot to bringing home ticks in a jar and setting them free in Randy's underwear drawer. Oh my god. He has it coming. Uh, it's not Raise him up and chug. chug! Thank you very much for it's the idea, Orp the Gripply. I don't like it. And then finally, uh, we will give from Holgaff one point of extra credit to the table. From Savage Clint, one point of extra credit to the table. Yay! And from Zwater ZA, one point of extra credit to Adelaide Blackwood. Oh, we have also unlocked the first mystery box ah. card of the evening. Yes. So let us reach into the box of mystery and see what Correct. mystery we shall be dealing with this evening. Can you... Once on the left. This one will come into effect when it does. Okay. Thank you very much, Alumni Association. Got three mystery box cards to juggle here. Totally doable. Uh, All right. Challenge. No, it was not a challenge. So you guys are drinking uh, right now. You're rolling a beer across the table. <laughs> but on top of that, you do have your partying roll to make. So let's get a bigger roll at a minus two for you fine gentlemen who are uh, staying up late and partying. Come yeah. on, bigger roll. Do a bigger roll. Mm. Oof. Oh man. Oh, I most. failed. All right. I need a six. Extra credit for <laughs> both to reroll. Also flailed. Oh no. Um. All right. Whew, that was almost a crit fail for Calvin. Here, take thing. that. All right, That's spending a Benny on Sawyer's part to reroll. Me too. Here, 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 I go there. and a Benny for Calvin. Because <laughs> this hindrance is effectively just always have one fatigue. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. Come on. Here's a Benny. Wow. Another Benny to reroll. Okay. It's, it's uh, the I'll worst. do one more. I will do it forever until I don't. I keep putting it in your pile. <laughs> I was like, don't there do that. There it is. I got it. Seven All right. minus two is five. I did it. Nope. Calvin got it on his first try with his heroic constitution. Goat baby, got it. You also did not make it. Not me. All right, so Calvin made it, but unfortunately, uh, Sawyer, the next morning, is suffering from the results of uh, dehydration, nausea, and uh, overall just feeling like butt. So here, have a point of fatigue mm -hmm. for your hangover. And Shimmickson, thank you very much for the resub. Thank you. So... You guys all head to the ETU parking lot in the next morning. That was the rendezvous point for Dr. Barton's trip into the burn. And uh, you see Dr. Barton, a, uh, a kind of uh, middle-aged, ginger-haired uh, individual, although the ginger is fading to gray. He looks a little bit uh, fussy and uptight, but he is dressed for an outdoor excursion. He is exceptionally khaki. He's got a backpack on, and when he sees you coming, he waves. Ah, oh, hello. Uh, yes, so um, three last arrivals. Uh, you must be, uh, I'm looking for uh, Joshua Sawyer. That's me. Uh, all right. Calvin Everett Jr. Yo, right here. All right. Uh, Adelaide Blackwood. Yeah. Okay, that's a fine name, Miss Blackwood. Thank and uh, who? Um, oh, he's not coming. Does anyone know Rahan Tegel? Ron Tegel Stevens. He's not coming. Oh, he's not coming? No, his dad needed help. Oh, well, that is very uh, gentlemanly of the, of the young man. Yes. Yeah, sorry, young Professor. Man. It was kind of a last minute thing. Ah, well, that's all right. Uh, we still have uh, the rest of the group. I believe you three are the last arrivals. Um, so uh, if you just 
head on over into the cluster there. I'll be explaining what we're going to be doing, giving you a, a, a rundown in advance. Oh, cool. All right, now, uh, so uh, there we are, everyone, uh, gather around, gather around. And there are about nine other students here that sort of cluster around with you. Um, none of them are people that you recognize from any of your classes. Um, these, these are students that you have not encountered before. Mm -hmm. um, from all walks of life, some of them seem like they are here to learn and to really take this seriously. Some of them are here because they just want to go camping in a weird spot, and this is the only way to do it. All right, all right, so um, uh, this is the beginning of our expedition. Uh, so uh, we will have the uh, East Texas University shuttle vans pick us up here, and then they will drive us off into the thicket. Uh, we're going to drive down an old logging road um, that has since become impassable, uh, washed out. So the rest of the way, we are going to have to make it on foot. So we'll be hiking one mile into the middle of the big thicket to head to, where are we going, everyone? Uh, uh, the, the burn. That burn, yo! That's right, that's right. Oh, yes, 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 there's like, quite a lot of excitement about, cool name, about this uh, this this very interesting ecological uh, area. And I'll explain more once we get there, but just know uh, this van right here, the one beside me, this one is carrying all of our scientific equipment because this is not a trip just for fun, just for laughs, no. This is a scientific expedition. So right. this equipment will be needed by myself and uh, any of you who are in the ecology track, hello Colin, um, to uh, gather data and samples. One of the requirements of the rest of you is that you help us lug this equipment along that mile. That's just a, a little Dr. Barton joke. You're funny, man. Don't okay. Yeah. All right then, uh, well, uh, everyone, let's pile into the vans. So, uh, yep, yep, here we go. I guess we do. Hip hop, all right, yeah. Uh, all right. All right, so everyone uh, you just starts he like milling around and heading towards the vans, like picking up their bags and their stuff. Uh, you guys get crammed into a van with a couple of other people that you've never uh, seen before. Uh, there is a young man who is dressed also in a very outdoorsy way, but in like a real outdoorsy way, in like a Land's End catalog outdoorsy way. This guy clearly, he's got a compass on his backpack. He knows what's going on and he is psyched to be here. Uh, you get the uh, idea that his name is Kyle? Um, from one of the other uh, people. That person is a young lady named Ariel Summers. Uh, she is a very cute uh, sophomore math major who seems very interested in Kyle. Mm. Uh, there is another young man in uh, your car who is wearing glasses and seems kind of uh, lanky and indoorsy and shy. He just kind of piles into the back and doesn't say much. And then, of course, there is Derek Ward. Oh, hey, 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 how's it going, y'all? This is your first time uh, going camping uh, out in the ver- I'm Derek, by the way. Hey, nice to meet you, Sawyer. Sawyer, all right, all right, hey. Uh, Adelaide. Adelaide, oh, that's a pretty name. Oh, thanks. Pretty name to go with a pretty girl. Oh. Sorry, my mama raised me right. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's up, man, I'm Yo, Derek. what's up, man, I'm Cal. Cal, Cal, that's short for anything? Calvin, man. Calvin, that makes sense, that makes sense. So, uh, listen, you guys, uh, you guys camping aficionados? Uh, no! Not really, 100% no. honestly, it's like one of the first times I've ever really been out camping. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, we did a little bit of like car camping when I was a kid. Car but, camping? Uh, what is what is car camping? <laughs> you know, just like we drive our car out to a campsite, but like just... And then you like sleep in your car? No, no, you... you my dad would like put up a tent and stuff, but you always had pretty much everything you needed and you just could drive off and get lunch somewhere. Hey, man. Don't knock it, all right? That sounds like just camping to me. You're sleeping in a tent, you're outdoors, don't matter how close your car is. All right, well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done that. N nothing too intense, though. So. All right, all right, all right, so is it not an entire neophyte here? What about what about you guys? You guys been camping before? A little, with like, when I was a kid. Little when you were a kid? Yeah. How little are we talking? Oh, like middle school? I'm just picturing you like running around with like cute little pigtails and like a, like a lunchbox. Maybe it has ALF on it or something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I had an X-Files lunchbox. Okay. All right. Drawing a picture in my mind here, the kind of person yeah. you are. And uh, buddy, Cal, what do you got? Uh, camping background. Uh, you strike me as someone, you're a glamper. Uh, yeah? Say what? You're a glamper. Glamping. You know glamping? Glamorous uh, camping? Yeah, I know glamping. You know glamping? You know glamping? Glamping. Glamping, yeah. No, I don't think that's me. My parents just took me to like a cabin when I was a kid. Can uh, can you guys stop saying the word glamping? It's starting to sound like it just doesn't mean anything anymore. I've just heard a lot. 
Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been asking everybody if they're uh, if they're glampers uh, before you guys got here. Uh, I don't know. It's just like a joke I, mean, I do to break the ice. Sure. If glamping is camping and style, then sure, I'm a glamper. That's right. what I thought. That's what I thought. Hey, uh, you guys ever see this? The this is scrawled on top of the van here it just says "Ancient Egyptian Curse." Thanks for the tip. That's weird. Huh. That's a weird graffiti. Man. Yeah, well, you know, we do stuff like that all the time to time. I've been on a couple of these camping trips. Uh, not this one, you know, uh, not out to the burn. Oh. So this is going to be tight, but... Uh, what are you here for? Just the burn? The, the experience of it. I actually, I, I hunt out all the different uh, campus camping trips that you can go on. There's a lot of them, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of a thing I do. You get extra credit. You get to get outside. Uh, you, you meet uh, pretty girls, you know what I'm saying, sometimes, right? Sure. He gets it. He gets it. Uh, yeah. So, uh... But, hey, have, have you been out to the burn before? Nah. Nah. First time. It's gonna be a little different from normal camping, right? I mean, it's not like there's any trees there. Uh, I don't, I don't think we're camping, like, in the burn <laughs> proper, right? Like, I don't even know if that's, uh, allowed. Uh, no, that, that's actually, uh, you can't, uh, camp within the confines of the burn. Uh, you can uh, along the outskirts, which is, I believe, where Dr. Barton said we were going to be camping, but, uh, yeah, you can't camp within the burn. Oh, all right. Yeah. Why, why can't you just camp on the burn? What's, what's happening there? It could be dangerous. Well, yeah, it, it, it could be dangerous. Oh, come on, guys, don't freak them out, okay? It, it's not dangerous, or else we wouldn't be going on this trip. Oh, that's not right? usually With how a school, school professor. No, that's not necessarily how school works. Uh, yeah, and that sure as hell ain't how ETU works, am I right? No, uh, listen, if this place is dangerous, uh, then uh, we're gonna find out when we get there. Probably not a moment before, right? Yeah, one way or the other we're gonna find out. You're right about that. Have you experienced a lot of dangerous things here at ETU? Well, listen, I'm an outdoorsman, you know? I go camping quite a lot. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm from the country. So, you know, yeah, I've fended off my fair share of coyotes. Oh, like you know, normal? little little some bitches come like just sniffing around your campsite while you're sleeping, and just you gotta just, what you gotta do if you hear that, just sit up, just start banging on the on the side of your tent, just make a lot of noise, turn on a light. Uh, sometimes like I make noise like an owl because I think coyotes hate that. Um, you haven't you haven't like run into anything like weird new to you, have you? At the school? Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, unless you count uh, unless you count Matt back there, right, Matt? I'm just kidding, Matt. You ain't weird. You're just a quiet guy. You can do you. He's gonna do him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why, you guys run into weird stuff? Oh, uh, I mean... Yeah, all the fucking time. What are you talking about? That school's filled with weird shit. Like, like what? Uh... Like, uh... A guy who really likes bugs. What? No, I mean, I, I, really I, like bugs. I really like bugs. I think they're kind of interesting. Yeah, like, like, no, like not that guy. kind of like. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you what, we, we can't really go into all the, like, details. Hold on, I'm curious. Are you talking about a guy who, like, likes, likes bugs? Oh, yeah. Um, kind of. Likes, likes bugs. Like, uh, not not like that. Like not like a, that kind of like. In a sexual way? No. Like, if he could. But, like, maybe, like, right? Maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, he probably but smooches no, bugs. Like, oh, my gosh. Kyle, did you hear that? There's, like, some, some guy that these guys know that's like into bugs. Well, it's uh -huh, actually uh -huh, more to cool. it than that. I'm just uh, trying to sketch out the area we're going to be exploring. Oh, have you been here before? Oh, that that's cool, Kyle. You're you're so prepared. Uh, uh are you talking to me? Yeah. Uh, I'm out of late, by the way. Hey, what's up, Kyle? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk when we get there. I'm I'm just I'm really trying to look over this stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, be prepared. That's. For a, oh yes, I agree with be prepared. I'm not a Boy Scout though. Uh, huh. I'm not a Boy Scout either. Oh, you're just a big fan well, of Lion King. I wasn't. Sad. No, I'm an Eagle Scout. Oh shit! All right. Boy Scouts are children. Like a super scout. Eagle Scouts are survivors. Okay. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like a part. Oh of yeah, no, yeah, Kyle. She was just being. You know, she didn't know you were an Eagle Scout. You know, a lot of people don't when they first meet you because. Because you it's not something them. you assume about people. But, well, uh, sure, sure, yeah, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just bow out of the conversation. I'm, I'm really just trying to do a run through of all of my, all of my stuff here. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. All right, cool. So uh, Kyle's out. Uh, that means we got what, like, uh, 
another half hour or whatnot in the van. Who's up for some car games? Uh, Let's do it. Uh, All right, who knows any car games? Oh, well, they're just like, we could see how many license plates. Oh, you guys, as Adelaide says that, you kind of look out the window along the like one lane road that you guys are driving uh, out of town on. Is this is this one bus that we're all in? No, uh, there's so a few, there's, there's a couple a different couple vans and the van with the equipment. So just this group of people is, are in this is van. Is the teacher in this one? No, he's not in this okay. van. Okay, cool. Okay. Who's driving? Let's play that just game. Bear volunteer. is driving. Let's, uh, you, you know the game where you pick a category and then you have to say something in that category and, and the last letter of that, the next person has to say something in that category that starts with that letter no one has said before, and then it continues like that. Okay, so like just hearing you say it out loud, I'm like, I don't really know exactly how that works, but maybe we'll pick it up as we go. All right, take us away. Let's see how it goes. And you guys <laughs> end up passing the time playing some awkward car games. In, yeah, in the I, car. I like to imagine like he misinterprets the rules the first time and we play his way and it's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, but his way ends up being kind of fun. It still actually, works in the scheme of things. Uh, BSB care, thank, thank you. you very much for BSB care. Up. And eventually, uh, you guys make it out to this old washed-out logging road uh, where the vans pull up and park, and everyone starts getting out. Um, the whole time you guys were in this van, Derek was, uh, you know, very boisterous trying to get you guys to keep playing this game, even though it seemed like everyone else was done after maybe a couple rounds. Uh, Matt just sort of sat in the back and read a book. Kyle was working on his stuff, and uh, Ariel was really trying to get Kyle to play the game with you guys. All right, everyone, out, out of the vans. Here we are, we've arrived. So uh, let's all, uh, everyone grab a case or some other bag or whatnot from the equipment van. Uh, and make sure that it's one that you um, won't have too much difficulty carrying over difficult terrain. Uh, it is quite, quite densely forested area here. The big thicket it doesn't get its name for being a thinnet. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> well, all right, well. Uh, yes, yes, uh, everyone line up, grab your equipment, and then uh, let's all get in a single file line. I will warn you, uh, quite a lot of poison ivy along this trail, oh. so uh, everyone knows how to identify it offhand, I trust. Uh. If you do not, please talk to uh, one of your more learned... Uh, uh, Kyle, uh, I believe, is an Eagle Scout. Is that right, Kyle? Kyle just holds up his three finger. Ah, take that as a yes. Not familiar with the organization myself, but um, I believe that he is an accomplished outdoorsman, so perhaps uh, speak to him. Or uh, uh, Mr. Ward, uh, uh, sorry, Derek, um, is also uh, local, so he can probably help you out as well. As he's saying this, I just quickly Google how to identify poison ivy. Ah, yes! Uh, Joshua, is it? Uh, I go by Sawyer, actually. Right, 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 right. Sawyer, you put that on the sign-up sheet. Uh, at this point, I should let you know uh, that you should not expect any cell phone service once we get to the campsite. This is a uh, not only a little bit of a remote location, but uh, just electronic equipment seems to act a bit funny uh, that far out. Uh, just one of the oh. many strange occurrences around this ecological wonderland. Which, by the way, means Adelaide dodged a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> does it? Mm, yeah, does it mean that? All the stuff we're carrying. All right. So <laughs> why did you bring that up? Load like yourselves up with bags that. or cases and let's head out. BSB Care, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. And apples within. Thank you for the resub and I hope you get those apples out. Um, get, um, unless they want them there. So, what the happy apples? What kind of equipment are you guys grabbing? Are you trying to do a light load? Are you trying to carry your weight just like everyone else's? Or are you trying to show off by getting something heavy? <laughs> uh, is there someone to show off to? Because it feels like... I mean, there's nine other people here. But it feels like Ariel and Kyle are pretty much a couple, so I don't see any other... Um, I don't know if Kyle would agree with that assessment. Um... Yeah, that's what Ariel wants. Oh... No, I'm fine. I'm gonna take a lighter load this time. A light load? Yeah. Okay, so I'm you're gonna intentionally load. walk up and take something that looks not as heavy as everything else. That's the plan. Okay. Um, go ahead and give yourself a plus one on the roll you're about to make. Um, okay. Who else would like to... I'm uh, going fair share. Fair share? Okay. I will too, I, but I will look for something that I can evenly distribute over my body weight. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, a so like a, a duffel bag? Oh, a weighted poncho? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a diving suit you can get inside of? All right, so you're all looking for something uh, relatively easy to carry. Uh, 
Ariel's right behind you in line, Calvin, as you pick up what looks like a sandbag. <laughs> Oh, dope. Yeah, someone's going to carry this sandbag. It's pretty heavy. Oh, I, I think those are actually um, just for weighting equipment down. Um, I, I I don't know that that's... Well, I mean, yeah, obviously we need to bring them, but um, I was I was going to grab uh, one of those. I'm not oh. super strong. Uh, all right, yeah, I guess you, I'll get something else. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Oh, my gosh, that's that's so nice of you. Uh, so, you are going to give... <laughs> that face? You're going to give Ariel your uh, yeah, sandbag? Yeah, I'll, I'll... Yeah, it's going to be oh, kind of shitty if I do it's, that. It's just that, um, yeah, no, you know, yeah. I, I, I got cool. these tiny little arms. And, yeah, uh, it's cool. Uh, or, actually... Oh, I, um, she she kind of looks over and sees Kyle walking over this way, and she gives you the sandbag back. Actually, give me something heavy. Give me, like, a heavy bag. Give me a heavy what? bag. You sure? Just give me a heavy bag really all quick. All right, yeah. Give me a heavy bag. Oh my god, oh, thank you, oh wow, oh, this is so much heavier than I thought it would look, but I guess I'll just carry it the whole way myself, just gonna carry, carry it, not, okay, he's gone. Hey, I don't, I don't think that, uh, Kyle dude is into you if you, that's what's going on. Oh, oh, what? No, Kyle? No, we're just friends, he just doesn't, uh, actually, I think this might be too heavy for me, actually, yeah, can I give okay. this back, can yeah, I give it back no, right that's now? That's fine, yeah, that's cool. I think I, I will, I will take the same back. Yeah, uh, yeah, heavy. Thanks. And she just kind of like wanders off, uh, following the rest of the group, looking Ooh. a little bit down. Cool, cool, cool. Do you grab another sandbag? Uh, if there's another one, I'll yeah, still, there's two. I'll still try to get a lighter load. Okay, you got a lighter cool. load. You guys grabbed a couple bags. Um, so this is a mile hike through the big thicket, uh, and there is a hiking trail, but it is somewhat overgrown. So I am going to need an athletics roll from all oh, of you guys. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be at no penalty if you are sharing the load and just oh, grab a normally sized thing, but you get a plus one, Calvin, because uh, even though everyone is looking at you resentfully, you are carrying uh, just the lighter sandbag. Yo, so you snooze, you lose. Everyone give me athletics. Looks like I lose. Mm. Mm. But here's a coin that says otherwise. All right, so both Calvin and Sawyer failed, but Calvin is spending a point of extra credit to re-roll. I'll use the table re-roll. Uh, Sawyer is going to use the table re-roll. I got one success. I'm good. You got I a got success? A five. You got a five. You're also good. Yay! You aced it. Ace. All right, so I got a six. Turns out all of you are pretty good at carrying things. Where's so you? Uh, you guys head off into the big thicket and. As you walk, it's even though it's hot today, um, it's it's not oppressively hot, and it is kind of nice out here. Uh, you guys haven't spent a lot of time exploring the thicket itself, except for the little bit of it you saw when you were off gallivanting with Nikita. Initiative Coffee Company, thank you very much. Thank for you, Nikita. Nice. Um, but it is a uh, it's kind of nice to be walking through the sun dappled trees and see all of the tangled brush and the mm. the small woodland creatures flitting about the branches and running through the underbrush and all the while Dr. Barton is pointing out uh, various different flora and fauna and uh, identifying it for anyone who might be curious or just identifying it aloud for anyone who might be listening to him. Um, after about an hour or so, you guys start to notice that things are looking a little different around you. Some of the uh, greenery is looking a bit more withered and brown, uh, and there is less activity from the animals and uh, the wildlife in this area. And as you continue, it eventually starts to get worse and worse. Uh, now things are not looking withered, now they look dead and desiccated, if they're even, uh, you know, there at all. And Dr. Barton starts to point out, ah, see, now here we see uh, some of the the outskirt effects of the area referred to as the burn. So the burn is not like a hard line. It is not, Miss Blackwood. In fact, interestingly, uh, well, and I'll show you more when we, uh, when I give you the tour, but first, first, we are nearing a, a campsite that I've used on previous expeditions. Uh, just around this bend here, there should be a nice site for us to set up our gear and our tents and have a nice late lunch before I give you all a tour of the area. So you guys turn the corner of the trail up here, and you do see what looks like a nice, clearly flattened area of land. However, there is uh, a lot of dead vegetation that is sort of entangled with the living vegetation on this campsite. Oh, oh dear. Uh, it seems that this campsite will not 
do for much longer, but it seems like it is not yet overrun. I think that if we clear away some of this dead brush, everyone, we should be able to set up camp here. Is the bird spreading? Why, yes, Miss Blackwood. Isn't that a curious thing? The area known as the burn is indeed spreading at a very slow rate over the years, although, if my readings are to be believed, uh, that rate has picked up a bit of late, which is one of the things that we will be notating while we are out here on this expedition. Uh, this is somewhat unexpected, though. I didn't think it would reach quite this far to the campsite since the last time I was here, but no matter. Um, any of you who are able to offer some assistance and, uh, and, and help me clear away some of this dead brush, we can get everything nice and set up for our campground. Now, who wants to pitch in? Oh. Gentlemen, I'm looking at all of you. Oh, I, I can help. Oh, and of course, a lady is equally as uh, able to, to help clear vegetation and brush. Of course, I would never insinuate otherwise. Uh, oh, then I, I hope I I'm, hope that I have... No, uh, it's you. I, I didn't take it that side. Oh, I'm just fantastic. saying I can help. Fantastic. Well, great, great. All right. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I'll yeah, help. Yeah, just yeah. me and Miss Blackwood, perhaps? Oh, are you going oh, to? Yeah, we'll oh, pitch fine, in, fine, yeah. fine. Let's do it. Yes. Tip top. Let's go. All right, yeah, just uh, just rip it all out and take it to the other side. What just the dead do? vegetation. Just pile it up in one area. Perhaps we can uh, oh. burn it. Yes, it might be. I don't know that it's been a while since I've gathered any readings from uh, burning the vegetation readings dead in this area. From burning it. Oh well, I just collect the ashes and take it back to my laboratory. To... What have you found? Um, uh, mostly that before when they were burned, uh, they had been reduced to uh, cinders. So it was already ash before you burned it? Oh no, uh, the ash layer uh, uh, comes when we get into the burn itself. But first, let's go ahead and set up camp. Uh, no spoilers for the tour, Miss Blackwood. You have an inquisitive mind, and you are baiting me to give away more information than I am ready to too soon. But Sorry. Uh, you will find that Dr. Barton is no easy egg to crack. Be uh, because I'm more of a hard, a hard-boiled egg. As it were. What would okay. they be cracking you for? Oh, oh uh, uh, spoilers. Spoilers, right? Hmm? You know Doctor Who? Kyle just kind of pop, uh, pipes in, are we going to clear this brush and set up camp, or...? Yeah. No. Yes, 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 sorry, I got distracted. Yes, uh, let's all pitch in. Uh, can everyone give me another athletics roll? Oh, my. Mm. Mm. Aced it. Mm. Aced it? Yeah. All right. I got a two. Ooh, me too. You got a two? Yep. I got a nine. Eleven. Do you want to re-roll it? I don't really have much to re-roll with. Uh, I'll use a table re-roll. Okay. And give it another try. I mean, you don't have to re-roll it. Yeah. It's still a two. Wah, wah. It's a two? Yeah, I just I gotta let it be. Okay. It's pretty exhausting Stop work. Stop messing with it. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pretty exhausting work. Um, uh, even though, even though you've got the cover of the trees and everything here, uh, Sawyer, you're not feeling a hundred percent after all of the drinking last night, and uh, you're definitely feeling dehydrated and wishing you had brought more water. Uh, Adelaide, of course, packed a lot of water, but you said you wouldn't need that much water. It's not going to be like you're gone for that long. And I never be, drink water you'll normally. Be damned if you're going to come crawling to her on your hands and knees now, saying you need some of that water. So, uh, you're gonna take another level of fatigue uh, from this. It tires you out pretty quickly, so you are, uh, you're, you're, you're feeling it, Sawyer. But, after doing that work, uh, and after Sawyer keeps taking frequent breaks and is sweating profusely, uh, you guys are able to clear out some, uh, area of land, set up your tents, and uh, everyone is just kind of congregating about sharing meals, uh, little bits of food and everything with each other. Everyone's trading like they're back in the cafeteria at uh, an elementary school. Uh, oh, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you one of my hot pockets for two of them cookies. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, two cookies, one hot pocket. That's a good deal. Take it, Eddie. What me? Yeah, take it How deal. are we gonna cook a hot pocket what on the fire? Figure it out. It's a hot pocket. Cookies are lame. I, this is your trade. I, I, I have my own food. You trade your food. I want to see if you actually do it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not fine, trading keep my. It dumb so is that a no on the trade, or that's fine? Talk to him. I'm no, not a part of cool. this. We don't know fireworks yet. We're 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 good. We're doing cookies. You don't. 
own fireworks yet? No, we don't know if the fire is going to be going. We don't know if that's just like a place where we can start. Oh, gotcha, fire. gotcha. Yeah, sure, so, sure, like, sure. Yeah, yeah, whatever, really man. Works. You don't have to sell it to me. I got other people. I got other buyers. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't understand what's happening. Shit. You guys enjoy, uh, con I guess, a confusing lunch. <laughs> and uh, then after a little bit, uh, Dr. Barton stands up. All right, everyone. Are we ready? Everyone uh, eating their fill? Yes. All right, and everyone has uh, some water and some, yes. and some hiking supplies? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. And I hope you packed your bug spray. Oh, yes. Because uh, there are many bugs out here in the thicket. Okay. Although, interestingly, not as many in the burn. Join me, won't you? I mean, that Let us take a tour sense. of this interesting ecological conundrum. So do we not need the bug spray for the burn? We're going to the burn, right? So we don't need bug spray. We do need bug spray. I'll just take the bug spray. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry, no, uh, perhaps I was unclear. Miss Blackwood, uh, there are plenty of insects in the surrounding areas, but uh, very few living creatures uh, within the, burn. the burn's confines. Right, which is where we're going. Yeah, yes, quite. Okay. Uh, Tichio, can I just, uh, I'm gonna grab my trail mix. All right, uh, okay. yes, that's fine. Uh, uh, although we must make an effort, uh, the Forest Service does request this, that uh, we leave no trace, even in the burn. Uh, oh. Even though it is a de ecologically devastated area, uh, still we should not litter or leave any food behind if we can avoid if it. If you take some food into the burn, does it, does it rot faster? Well, I don't know that that's anything that I've thought to measure, but that would be an interesting experiment to set up for next time, Miss Blackwood. Uh, very, very good, very keen mind. Okay. Anybody else want Keith's uh, party trail mix? No, no. No. It's just some trail mix. Yeah, Clearly all right. it's well, not. Fun. Yeah, okay, but like, I don't... Yo, Derek, you want some? What if one of those things shows no, up again? No, Derek, don't take any of the party trail I mix. mean, I do love trail mix, my man. Uh, yeah. I'm a big fan. Uh, what's it got, raisins in it, though? Uh, no, don't got raisins, but it does have party stuff. Calvin. Like uh, like them Gardetto things that are like the big, thick, uh, oh. brown things that everybody likes? Those from... garlic ones? No. I, 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 I pulled Calvin too. aside for him. Like, Calvin, you can't sneak people drugs I'm if they don't know them. that they're going to have drugs. I'm going to tell him. He clearly doesn't but know. But I don't want to say it out loud. All right, Derek, look. Look, man. What? what? It's drugs. Oh. Party drugs. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a hard pass. Uh, that's a bad time to be doing drugs, just like out in the wilderness alone, especially when you're in a relatively untamed area. Well, I'm not alone. I got, I got my friends with me. Well, yeah, but you're setting yourself up to be kind of like a handicap to everyone else. Like, if you hurt yourself or freak out and start, like, running off into the woods, it's going to be on everyone else to save your ass. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I ain't here to judge, man. You do you. All right, your friends, uh, your rules, but uh, I ain't going to partake because uh, I don't want to be a burden to everybody. Hold up, teach. All right. And uh, you guys start following uh, everyone out to the burn? Uh, yeah. Uh, Professor Barton gets everybody gathered over and pulls a bag uh, of equipment to the side and says, oh, hold on, everyone, before we head out into the burn. Now, I, I must warn you. Well, not warn you, but uh, I, I will preface this by saying that no one has ever been able to conclusively prove that the ash in the burn is in any way toxic or poisonous, or anything adversely physically effective. However, just as a precaution, I must insist that everyone wear one of these uh, face masks. And he pulls out uh, a couple boxes of uh, store, store bought drugstore uh, face masks, basically. The kind of thing you wear Sick on an airplane. Japan sort of exactly. face mask. Oh. Uh, so everyone grab one, um, be sure and put it on uh, firmly over your nose and mouth. Uh, again, I don't believe there is anything dangerous about breathing in the ash, but still, why breathe in more ash than you have to? Am I right? Sure. Yeah, yes. Right, yeah. Right, that, that would have killed in the ecology building. Mm. That's fine. Um, all right. <laughs> so, let us go. And he starts walking off, and you guys follow? Mm hmm All right. So, as you're walking, the vegetation continues to get... Uh, more and more withered until finally it just looks like up ahead it dies off entirely. You just see an open field 
of nothing but this weird, oily, black ash covering the ground. It seems like something that should have washed away as soon as it rained, and yet it persists, just sticks to the ground. Uh, Dr. Barton points out a little orange flag that's been stuck in the ground. You'll notice over there, Miss Blackwood, you were asking earlier about the burn. That was a marker I placed on an earlier expedition uh, several years prior to this. You will see, at that point, I had marked the edge of the dying or dead vegetation as you can all see, it has spread well past the confines of that marker. And how long ago did you place this? Uh, that was, uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, that one, I believe, was a year and a half ago. Oh. Uh, so, uh, three expeditions ago, I believe? That it, but it doesn't normally move that fast, is what you were saying? It's, it's moving faster? Well, it has moved at a glacial rate since uh, whatever event caused the burn. Uh, uh, you know, the prevailing theory is, and this is what the Forest Service uh, gets so up in arms about, that there was illegal chemical dumping done in this oh. area. Uh, you know, in the period of time, early 50s, regulations were a bit lax, shall we say, in the uh, local state offices, so wouldn't not enough? entirely out of uh, the realm of possibility. Wouldn't they have been able to find some traces of the chemicals, though? One would think, Miss Blackwood, one would think. However, none have been discovered so far, at least not in any of the soil samples that I have taken. Um, uh, there is more to see, everyone. Let us, let us carry on. And he starts walking you all along the edges of the burn. He's explaining that originally this was a one mile diameter area, but it has now grown to encompass two square miles of space that originally spherical has now sort of started to just move out in a blobbish sort of way. Uh, no one has yet been able to discover what exactly is causing this death and decay to spread, as we said. That does not appear to be anything poisonous or toxic about the ash. There is uh, no reason that it shouldn't have been washed away by the rain. It is a very, very strange thing. My hypothesis is there is, in fact, some sort of fungus involved in this, although that's just a hypothesis. I have no hard data to back that up, but that is one of the things that I intend to prove, and if I can, I stand to gain tenure. Oh, cool. Yes, quite, Mr. Everett. It is rather cool. Um, Professor. He's, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 questions, of course. I'm open for questions. Do you know how, like, deep down this stuff goes? I mean, it seems like the entire area is, like, the earth's been salted, basically. Well, it's interesting that you ask. Uh, Sawyer, is it? Yeah. Yes. Um, the ash layer covers uh, just the topsoil. Down below, there does not appear to be anything uh, unusual about the soil quality. However, this is an interesting tidbit. Uh, there was a uh, Forest Service effort to repopulate the trees in the area. Only ended up killing 500 or so saplings. Yeah. Huh. For some reason, even though the ash only covers the top area, it doesn't appear to have any scientific qualities that would adversely affect plant life. Here we are. Nothing grows. Since, uh, let's see, 1953 was when the burn first appeared, so it's been, what, uh, something years since, uh, since then? Oh, yeah. That's a pretty exact number you just said. <laughs> yes. And uh, still, as you'll see, no vegetation. Not even little shoots of green sticking up from beneath the oily ash. Huh. Anyways, let's continue on. Uh, he starts uh, walking you guys sort of around the border of, of the burn, and, and you can see off to your left just the decimated area of it. Sound has a strange quality out here this close to the ash field. It's almost like it's been dampened somewhat by this layer of ash that just blankets everything. It feels a little bit quiet and desolate out here, partially because there are no other living things operating outside in this rolling area of Earth, and it is quite a large area. As you guys keep walking, um, you notice that the professor seems to be sweating uh, very profusely, um, more so even than Sawyer. Mm -hmm. um, Adelaide, of course, being the only person who's not sweating because she is not adversely affected by heat. Um, and he uh, seems to be uh, short of breath as he's pointing things out. Now, this is, um, <clears throat> is a local uh, pine sapling that I noted last time had just begun to break up out of the earth, and you'll see that... Um, Sorry, uh, you'll see that uh, it, it ha had reached uh, quite uh, an impressive size, especially considering all of the dead vegetation around, but now look at it, just a, um, <clears throat> a desiccated husk of a 
living titan. Do you need you some okay water? Uh, yes, yeah, so no, no, I'm, I'm just um, feeling a little under the weather, I think. Um, I will finish up the tour and then uh, maybe I can uh, get some rest in the, uh, in my tent. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes, uh, and, and, then, and then also, uh, here, if we could, uh, um, uh, Colin, did you bring uh, one of the, the beakers to gather samples? Yes, uh, so I'd like you all to watch. Um, Colin, my assistant here, is going to uh, take a sample of uh, <clears throat> some of the ash. Uh, so uh, Colin uh, is going to be very careful, of course, to wear gloves. Uh, again, I don't think that there's anything that we need to keep an eye out for. Um, excuse me. And he just sort of like walks over and just stands uh, by a tree for a moment. And Colin and the rest of the students look a little confused, but Colin just keeps on going, sort of takes over with the explanation. I'm just trying to scoop some of this ash into, into this, and then uh, Dr. Barton's gonna take it back and examine it back in the lab. Um, it's ecological stuff. You know, I wanna thank go. You. Grad, hey, student thanks, Pope. grad student Pope, thank you Pope. very much I for the tip. Pope. I wanna go over to uh, Professor Barton. Okay. Be like, hey, uh, Professor, are you feeling okay? Um, I'm quite all right, uh, Mr. Sawyer, quite all right. Um, well, do we need to sit down for a while? Because... No, 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 I, I don't... I fear... I fear that I might have eaten um, some expired canned goods. I didn't trust the look of those cans, and still I forged bravely ahead when perhaps I should have let discretion be the better part of valor. Ugh! Uh, yes, I, uh, phew. Okay. I think it might be wise if, uh, um, listen, listen, uh, everyone, sorry, uh, <laughs> I, I appear to be uh, a little bit, uh, this is embarrassing, uh, intestinally indisposed. Um, what? I don't want to cut the expedition short, so here is what I'm going to suggest. I am going to just pop back to the campsite and maybe see if I can grab a quick nap and uh, dig a latrine for myself in the relative privacy of the camp, since the rest of you will be buddying up <clears throat> and uh, exploring the burn. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, now, I must insist, uh, you must travel with at least one other student, all right? I don't want anyone wandering off on their own. Uh, this is a large area, and we don't want to be having to um, higher, uh, search, um, I don't want anyone to get lost. Um, so, uh, partner up, um, explore the area, see if you can find anything interesting. Uh, whoever finds the most interesting thing, uh, tonight while we are, uh, making s'mores can, you can all share your stories and I'll, um, there's a prize for whoever finds the most interesting thing. Do um, somebody need to go with you? No, no, Miss Blackwood, I, I'm, I'm fine. As I was telling Mr. Sawyer here, I fear I may have overindulged in some goods that were slightly past their shelf life. Does it sound like he's lying? Uh, give me a notice roll. And don't forget to add your plus one to this for knowing if someone is lying. <laughs> uh, I got a uh, 12. A 12? Is that with your minus two? Uh, no, it's a 10 with my minus 2. A 10 <laughs> with your minus 2. Forget, I get minus 2 on everything. That's right. You shouldn't have exerted yourself so much. <sighs> uh, he appears to be telling the truth. Um, he does seem a little bit nervous about the expiration date on the cans, especially since he said it to you. You can now see that that just seems to be the wheel that's running through in his head, and he clearly does not feel well. Sure. Um, so yes, uh, partner up. Explore and then uh, make sure everyone that you are back at the campground before sunset. All right, this place can get a bit uh, dangerous after dark, and it's just easier to trip and hurt yourself or wander in the wrong direction. And again, we don't want anyone to get lost. So, um, yes, quite uh, uh, enjoy the ecological marvel that is Pine Box's burn. I, I really, mm, I must go. Right. And he kind of turns and sort of stiffly walks uh, back the way you guys came, seeming in somewhat of a rush. All right, man. Enjoy your poop. Hey, man, not cool. All right? I mean, clearly that guy is going to go just drop all of it. But uh, he won't point that out in front of everybody, all right? He'll make himself conscious. Well, whatever happens, we should probably go in a little while, go check out the campsite again just to make sure he's 
okay, but uh, I, I I can go check on him in a in a little bit. I don't particularly want to spend a lot of time uh, walking around this dead area. Yeah. Uh, I, so I'll just stay with the with the with the doctor at the campsite. Well, maybe give him some privacy for a little while. At least. Uh, Kyle pops up. Uh, yeah, let's give it. Let's give the man some privacy. All right. Uh, you know, doing your business out in the woods is a difficult thing. And besides, I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to explore an area that not many people get access to. Oh, that's a good point, Kyle. I hadn't thought about it like that. Do you have a partner? Uh, we could buddy up while we we check everything out. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. So Ariel runs off to partner up with. Uh, with Kyle and everyone else is partnering up as well. Matt partners with Derek. Are you guys gonna go as a well, as a trio? Uh, Ron's not here, so should we just all stick together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, and you guys head out into the burn. Mm -hmm. All right, so everyone is wearing their face mask still, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what exactly are we oh, hang, looking hang on. for? <clears throat> uh, can I, I? I forgot I had this, but could he use this? What, like, because we had and have like a half half hour of undisturbed downtime to restore. So um, he, it says what does the card say? When a character has at least half hour of undisturbed downtime to restore, a character as if she had a full night's rest. This restores all power points, removes all fatigue. I mean, it's just like one o'clock at this point. So you guys have several hours before sundown. So you don't have to go out into the burn right now. You guys could sit down, take a breather, just try and get your bearings if you wanted, and I'll let you use that card on Sawyer Adelaide. This, oh, this, th there's a part of the tone in your voice that feels like there's a catch. Nope, not at all. All right. Sawyer, <laughs> you are able to gain a quick cat nap. You uh, want some water? You seem thirsty. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great. I'm just gonna lie down against this tree. We can take a nap. Oh, oh and uh, out. Wow. Sawyer kind of passes out immediately, but after a little bit, he no. wakes up feeling very refreshed. Okay, I'm better. <sighs> and completely oh. healed of all of his fatigue, as though he had had an entire night's sleep. Excellent use of that card, Adelaide. <laughs> I just remembered I had it. I was like, wait! And really quickly, while use. we are just having a break, sitting down at the base of this tree in the shade before venturing out into this dead zone. Wait, wait can, can I throw in a, in a quick detail? Yes. Uh, Sawyer, Sawyer does what he calls a coffee nap, where he takes out some of the coffee he brought, because he definitely brought coffee. Absolutely. Let's be, yeah. let's be real. And he just, like, downs uh, a thing of it and then lies down and like takes a quick nap and wakes up 30 minutes later and just feels much better. Feels so good. Is that wake up juice from Back to the Future 3. <laughs> yeah. In 30 minutes though, he's gonna be kicking it. <laughs> All right, raise your red solo cups as we sit here in the shade for some alumni have bought us some shots. Woo! Ancient Egyptian curse bought us a shot. When the dom's away, this curse will play. Who knows how well the internet will work until an NPC is sacrificed for me. Oh. Raise him up and chat! Yes. Thank you very much, Ancient Egyptian Curse. I don't like that, Derek. You BSB heard me say, I guess Dennis has got to go. BSB Care bought us a shot. Let's give a rousing ETU thumbs up for tonight's sponsor, Hot Pockets. Did you warm it up for too long or not enough? You won't know until you bite in. Hot Pockets, it's a surprise in every pouch. Raise them up and chug! Thank you really very much, is. Hot Pockets. Please send us money. They're never cooked all the way, but we will shill them out. And grad student Pope finally bought us a shot. Remember, kids, cite your sources or you'll end up sweaty and haunted. Raise them up and chug! chug. Thanks very much, grad haunted. student Pope. Sweaty and haunted sounds like a TV show. <laughs> it, it, it's like one of those, uh, those like real life shows where they follow someone around. It's like sweaty and haunted. It's this like, is my life. I thought it was like another like naked and afraid type show. I feel like you would oh, be sure. a haunted house in like the Amazon or something. I feel like some people gave us extra credit. Me. Shimmickson would like to give three points of extra credit, depending on when something happens. There's a lot of those. And yeah. If it ha yeah, the others haven't happened. Someone They're still out. Someone crit fail. BSB Care would like to give a point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lee. Dean Lee. Apples Within would like to give a point of extra credit to Adelaide. Oh. Thank you. Also Apple apples. An initiative <laughs> coffee company would like to give a point of extra credit to Sawyer. Yay, thank oh, you. Probably for drinking coffee, but I don't know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so everyone spreads out into the burn. Um, what are you guys planning after you take your, your brief cat nap? Uh, I believe, Calvin, you were about to ask a question. Oh, yeah. So what, what, are we, what are we looking for out here exactly? I don't know, but I think we should definitely be checking the center. Does the anyone know how to find the center? I mean, like, GPS don't really work, so my phone's like... Well, I've got the picture on my phone, so maybe we can kind of try to use the map. 
somehow. I mean, I, yeah, this pull up like the a... picture on your phone, Adeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Addy, okay, yeah, that's a good idea, Addy. Let's just, just real quick that. first, give me a roll on that anti-technology table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did this to yourself. Uh, Elias Sniper, thank you very much for the tip. Thanks, Elias Sniper. Sniper. Just a d6. I believe so. Get that five or six. I got a five! Normal. What does it say? The device mostly works oh, right. as it's supposed to, mostly. The device mostly works as it's supposed to, mostly. So you pull out your phone, and you start going through your gallery, uh, and you try and find the picture of the giant five-foot map on the wall of the sanctuary, and you uh, pull it up, and uh, for some reason, uh, you can only view it in extreme close-up zoom mode. You cannot get your phone to zoom out. It is just zoomed in on the picture, no matter what you do. I can't get it to, well, okay, this kind of... Just like zoom out? I, I can't, it's not, it's not working. All right, Addy's phone's busted. Uh, I don't think my phone's busted. I mean, you can still not... see the map, it just takes yeah, longer. Sure. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, I say without the professor or anybody else, we, we can't go too deep into this. I mean, we could end up, like, something bad could be out there. I mean, we know a lot of this stuff seems to be centered around the burn. I mean, I guess, but everything's, like, dead out here. Like, what? what so you guys it? are still on the outskirts of it. You are not out in the burn yet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we have to, like, that's why we came, right? Like, we should go check this out. Let's go in, um, take some pictures, see if there's anything interesting out there. Who knows? Just keep open minds, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so are you guys trying to find the center of the burn? Uh, I mean, yeah, generally speaking. As long as we, like, are able to find our way back. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a big flat area, and there are um, some markers. Uh, those those orange flags are planted in this area. Uh, sure. You guys can take some time to make an, uh, a mental note of the landmarks. But there's also, your classmates are also out. You can see them just sort of, like, spreading out over there. So, I mean, it's not like you'll be entirely alone. Did you say how big okay. the Phantos 80, thank what? you very much for the This tip. marker is labeled Phantos number 80, so we got to remember that we can take the Phantos trail and go back to 80, and that's where we started. <laughs> Two square miles is Two how big uh, Dr. Barton told you the burn is currently so pretty big but not gigantic yeah okay so you guys are stepping out into it yeah basically as soon as you step out of the tree line and into this desolated area it's like everything feels a little different all of a sudden the the quieter aspect that the thicket had taken on the closer you got to this place and the muted quality of sound seems to get louder as soon as you step out into the ash. Um, and it is weird how flat and devastated this whole area is. When I say flat, I mean devoid of any vegetation. There's actually a fair amount of rolling landscape here, but on other than that, there is nothing to see but this oily black ash that just covers everything. You can see the line of trees off in the distance uh, in various different places where you look where the vegetation has resumed growing. But even from here, you can see that the tops of some of those trees are getting a little bit brown or yellow, and you can see the effects of the burn as it spreads, like the doctor was saying it has been. This has got to be like a, a magic associated thing, right? I mean, like, if they can't find anything... I, I, I don't know. That would be my guess. I mean, for all we know, they've found stuff and someone's just covered it up. Sure. If they covered it up, would they, like, not let people come out here? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Adelaide, as soon as you step out in here and you guys start walking out, you start to feel weird. You start to get, like, this weird prickle inside the back of your skull that just mm. kind of puts you on edge. And then... You feel like you're getting a weird sort of, not quite a headache, it just feels like this spike or this tiny nail is being slowly pressed into one part of your head. It just makes you wince visibly. You guys can tell that something is is bothering her. Okay, Eddie? Yeah, it just feels like really weird. And it's like making my head hurt or something. And here. then, uh oh. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a different place. You find yourself Yo! remembering that what? being on a raft out in water and, and seeing someone, some strange guy, seeing the flesh being pulled from his face as he's pulled underwater. I need you to make a fear check for me, uh, Adelaide. Okay. <laughs> Give me Just a spirit roll. Though. Just Adelaide. Uh. Okay, I got a 
five. A five. Yeah. Which is a success. You see this horrific vision in your head and it makes you feel cold all over as you break out in sweat and then almost as if it had never happened at all. It is stricken from your mind, leaving you standing there sweating because the card we pulled was Mnemonomizer Shmamonomizer. A random PC is struck by a flashback from the Lost Spring Break episode what? before nice. it suddenly oh. vanishes from their mind, but not before they make a fear check. That is from Owen Lean. That's Thank a you very oh, much. Good, good idea. idea. That's, That's very crazy. Good. And all of a sudden, Adelaide, you find yourself back in the burn, oh. feeling strange, but none the wiser about cool. what just happened. I I don't know. I just felt like I like went somewhere else for a second, but I don't. I mean, clearly I didn't. Oh shit, you have some of that canned food too? What, no. No, I, I don't, no, I'm fine, right. I just. Well, hey, if, if you start feeling weird about anything else, anything at all, you have to let us know. Yeah, I will, I will, yeah. yeah I mean, you too. Yeah. I mean, I feel fine. How are you feeling, sir? I feel okay right now, especially after that quick nap. Yeah. So, you guys have the map pulled up on Adelaide's phone, right? Mm-hmm. Are you guys trying to use that to locate what might be the center of the burn? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to need you to make a survival roll. Oh my, okay. I don't have that. I wish Ron was here. Right? <laughs> uh, wait, so so in that case, um, I'm just going to say from a rules perspective, we the can't thing use that makes- survival? You can no. use survival, yeah, you're but right. the thing that makes the most sense is one of you roll and the other support yep. in that case. Yep. Who wants to who? I'll support. I mean, I feel like we all have the same stuff. Well, don't you have really jack of all trades? Support. Is there a way to oh, yeah, use I do. that? I mean, I, not if you don't have cell uh, access. I could. Out I here. could she harass, probably brought a book. Uh, Kyle. Ooh. You could, but you'd have to find him first. And Kyle was one of the first who set out into this area. Kyle. <laughs> Are you going to make the check? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter, but we don't, do we all have to use survival to support? No. Right. So, okay. If uh, anybody has good ideas of a different skill. I mean, it is your phone. Can I use academics? You can't, unless you're supporting. If I support, though? Yes. Can I use academics on, like, this is what I've read about survival. Sure, I just need to know who's making the okay. survival role I'm gonna, first. I'm gonna use that, so. You I'll make, make the survival the, roll. You make roll. Okay. Okay, you're gonna make the survival. So you're gonna use academics. So <laughs> you hand your phone over to Calvin. Uh -huh, and Calvin, now that you're out here in the burn, looking at this map, uh, zoomed in as it is on the phone, you have to keep moving it around. You're trying to see if there's any landmark you can uh, land on. All right, and cool. Adelaide starts pointing out. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Well, uh, so uh, I don't know. I just like information I have about how plants grow and what that means mm -hmm. direction-wise and where the sun is and things okay, like so that. Okay, so you're just trying to give him like different navigational buzzwords that yeah. you know, uh, little <laughs> little tips to basically help orient. And him. I got a seven, but I'm gonna try to re-roll it, see if I can get Rerolling with extra credit. She crit failed. Crit failed. I was like, come she on, got a seven. Like seven was like, fine. Like, damn it, but I now know. she crit failed. If so, I'd gotten an eight though, you would've gotten two. Tell I'm me, gonna support two. Tell yeah. me what you tell Calvin. Tell me what you tell him. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that when trees grow straight Hi. up, like when they're pointed, like, you know, sometimes they slant, but when they're going straight up, uh -huh. that's north. Uh, what? Yeah, all right, so all the straight trees are to the north, Calvin. Uh, that's <laughs> what you learned from Adelaide. What the fuck are you talking uh, about? That is going to be a uh, minus two to your roll. That doesn't help me at all. No, it doesn't. Wait, that's a minus two? It's a An additional fail. minus two? Yeah, you crit failed. I thought it was just going to be a minus one to his roll. Like, a my is that a regular would add a minus one. No? I think it is a minus one. Yeah, you're right. It's been a while since I've read this rule because I don't but have my suede box yet. But I'll say, oh, sure, actual rule? it's a minus one. Yeah, yeah. if you crit fail uh, a support, you, you negatively impact. Failure just doesn't give you anything. It doesn't take away. Okay, right. so a minus one uh, from what Adelaide's trying to do. What are I you doing? I would like to support with notice. I, I want to look at the map that they have and I imagine it probably has markings for some of the known like trails and stuff through it. I don't know that this map would, especially because it's from the 50s and the trails and everything okay. have changed a bit since then. Well, 
in that case, I want to look for like any landmarks, uh, anything that I can like connect to where we came from. And so I will say probably what makes the most sense for you is to get the phone zoomed over to the corner where you can see the map scale, uh -huh. and then try and start like seeing if you can figure out where you guys started and like about how far in you are. Yeah, and kind of and kind of be like, okay, um, that line of trees over there, I think, lines up with what I'm seeing over here as being that left edge. There you of go. The, so that's the kind of thing. Sounds I'm trying good. To do. Make a notice roll. All right. Just don't crit fail. You crit failed. Oh my god! You crit failed. You did? No. Um, so tell me what you tell Calvin. Uh, I'm pretty sure that tree is this. <laughs> what do you mean that this, tree is? This? No, like, like, look. If you look at that row of trees, there's like a line here on the thing. And that's a straight tree. <laughs> and yeah, if but that tree that is tree... straight. Then this way is north. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't and tell me where we are. We really could use Ron right oh now. Oh my <laughs> god, I cannot believe we both just crit failed. <laughs> no. I just straight through a crit but fail. Don't worry. Too. All is not lost because Adelaide gets two points of extra credit from Vampire54 for being the first player to crit fail. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thanks. So, oh my god. Calvin, You're in a minus you are rolling four. at a minus four um, right. because of your friends here. However, cool. Calvin. Mm -hmm. You're actually rolling a minus Didn't six. Didn't you see train. this on YouTube one time? The next time a player attempts an unskilled check, they instead roll a d8, and this can be re-rolled. Ah! This card was from Ghost Hack 9. Yay! Oh, cool. So, rather than That's rolling helpful. a d4 minus two, you're just rolling a d8 minus two for the help from your friends. What minus four. No, total. No, minus oh. two. Oh, minus two total? Rather than untrained, oh. you're rolling Holy a cow. D8 Damn. normally. We so help you. <laughs> give me a D8. All right, all right, let me just think. What would Ron do? What would Ron do? You just kick a tree w over. W-R-D. <laughs> uh, I Crip got, uh, no. Uh, it's a two total. A two? Well, will... that's, I mean, that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Two, but... if, if you crit fail, we all just die. <laughs> Par for the course, Don't do, do it, baby. it. What does this say? So it's a four. Three and a four. That's still a failure. Yes, it is. Wouldn't uh, have been if your friends hadn't helped you. <laughs> <laughs> you punks. You goofy doofuses. There you go. You ate your on both Yay! guys. Oh, you did it again on both guys. Double A's. That's he because took we all the both good rolls. Failed. Hey, Vampire 54 is going to give you the other two points oh. of extra credit for being the first person to double ace. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. cool. Me. Wow, that might not have even happened. Should That's I keep crazy. going? Does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm at 14 so far. Uh, 14 plus 5 is 19. 19. Yeah. Okay, oh, so despite what they're telling you about the trees being straight, being north, and this line of trees maybe is that. <laughs> um, I'm saying it like with confidence. Too. You you just start just sort of zoning them out, just kind of making them go far away mm -hmm. in your head as you think about what would Ron do? What would Ron do? What would Ron do in this situation? Uh, and all of a sudden, you do notice um, this like weird landmark on the map. This this like there's one tree that like looks really weird and out of place on the map and looking over around the tree line, you see one tree that is way taller, pointing straight up, but it doesn't seem like it's in a northern direction. Um and seems to correlate to this tree on the map. Like apparently this weird looking tree was enough of a landmark that it made it onto this map and using that, you're pretty sure you can navigate the, your group to the middle of the burn where those lines intersected. All right, that, that, that tree's this. So that means we go this way. Uh, okay. 100%, this is it. Okay. Don't question me, because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is right. Well, okay. I think we were pretty sure about our stuff, but all yeah. right, you yeah, seem well, confident. Yeah, well, if Ron was here, he'd probably back me up. And I think you're, um, you know, well, let's not talk about it, let's just keep walking. Okay. Okay, so uh, Calvin taking the lead you guys start walking out into the midst of the burn. And the energy out here is oppressive. There's not anything necessarily that makes you feel off, although Adelaide, you're still getting that weird prickly okay. sensation at the back of your skull, and you're not entirely sure what it means. But there's just this muted kind of dreamlike quality to being out here. Uh, Y'all, look. I know we don't like mention this a lot, but this feel, this place like feels haunted, you know? 
like mm. some, something's off. Yeah, no, it really does not feel right to me, but I mean, I, I guess I didn't really expect it to. I just like, well, yeah, let's, like, like legit, let's just try and, what is that? You guys hear from off to your right behind a small little hill of ash, what sounds like a strange scratching noise. Uh, I want to pull my hammer out of my, uh, I keep it in the, my belt loop. Okay. I want to pull it out and be like, all right, let's just... Wait, I thought things didn't, like, live out here. They don't, yeah. Let's just see what it is. Okay, yeah, I'll pull out my taser. Okay. I'll pull out my Louie. I walk towards it. Are you guys approaching stealthily? Mm -hmm. Yes. Give me stealth roll. Oh, no. Let's just assist on stealth, actually. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's a fail for Sawyer. <sighs> it's a fail for Calvin. Ooh. It's an ace for Adelaide. Five. Five? Mm -hmm. Six. Six? I failed. Okay. So you, Sawyer, start creeping over to this little hill of ash from which that sound is emanating from the other side of, and Adelaide, you're right behind him. And as you're about to turn around the corner of it and just see what is over there, Calvin just stumbles forward and drops the bat onto the ground and it hits with a uh, and the scratching stops. take another step forward. Okay, and just sort of peek around? Mm -hmm. Nothing is there. Is there any sign of something that was being scratched? Give me a notice roll. Uh, that is a failure. I will re-roll. Okay. Oh wait, no, it's not a failure. It's a, a, a five. A five? Yeah, that's not a failure. That's no. a success. So you kind of walk over to check and see if you see any signs of scratching or scratch marks or anything on the ground, which you do not find. Can you guys each give me a notice roll, please, um, at a minus one? Have you guys seen Tremors? What? No? First give me a notice roll at a minus one, and then let's go down that rabbit hole. Well, I was trying <laughs> to find my notice. I got an eight. An eight? Oh, no, and a seven, sorry. Seven. Five. Five? Wait, at a minus one? Yes. Four. Okay, cool. Sorry. <laughs> um, so you guys see Sawyer kind of walk over there and start looking at the ground. Um, and Adelaide, just before you ask the group if they've seen tremors, <laughs> uh, you both notice what looks like a little scratch on the back of Sawyer's neck. Oh, hey, you... It looks bright red and freshly abrased. What is shit? I don't, I, you have a scratch. What? On your neck. Yeah, it I looks think like you just. Uh... Maybe something got you on the back. Yeah, uh, the back of your neck's a bit tender. It's not bleeding. It's not like necessarily broken the skin, but you can feel a raised area that feels a bit tender to the touch, like it's sensitive, like it was just recently scratched. Okay, yeah, that's probably nothing. I we were just walking through the woods. I probably just, I mean, there were branches and stuff all over the place. Maybe it's that, that's that poison ivy that the professor was talking about. Well, the poison ivy doesn't usually grow up that high. Uh, Look, I, mean, I guess you did. We're, to sleep. we're not worried about me, okay? I, I feel fine. We should. Be quiet and keep paying attention because if there's something else out here, then. But we just want to find it before it finds us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let, let, let's keep going. All right. You guys are continuing on? Yeah. Okay, so Calvin, you take a moment to kind of reorient yourself on the map, but you've got a really strong idea of where it is you need to head, and you guys keep walking that direction. Uh, Sawyer, every now and then, that little scratch on your neck will just sort of pulse and flare a little bit with your with your heartbeat and it's just uncomfortable. Now that I've noticed it, it's just like one of those like the, the place in your mouth that you like, oh, where, where did I bite that? That you just keep running your tongue over. It's just like that. Um, as you guys are walking, um, you continue to see no sign of any animal life whatsoever. That includes insects or any. There are just as Dr. Uh, Barton said, I don't know why I cannot remember his name. Dr. Barton. Uh, there are just no... Remember, it's like Hawkeye. It's just like Hawkeye. <laughs> there are no insects out here that you've been able to see. Whereas before, there were mosquitoes buzzing all over the place. There are none. 
out here in the burn. And you guys are getting closer to what looks like a rising hill off in the distance. Uh, mm -hmm. A legitimately, you know, not a huge hill, but one that's decently sized. And Calvin, based on what you've been seeing, that looks like it might be the center of the burn, the area that you guys are heading towards. I think that I think that's it right there. Calvin oh. tries to say, but as soon as he opens his mouth, absolutely no sound comes out. Did In he fact, say that? I mean, he has all sound around you guys has completely cut off, and I don't mean like it got quiet. I mean there is no sound of wind. There is no sound of your footfalls on the floor. There is no sound coming out of Calvin's mouth. There is nothing. It's as if all at once, all of a sudden, the three of you have gone completely deaf. I, I can't hear anything. Can you hear? I can't hear what you're saying. What? Okay, go back. Go back. Is that what you're saying? Uh, okay. I guess we walk a little further back the way we came. So you walk further back the way you came. And that was from Adelaide's perspective, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she so. was just as silent as everyone else. Hooray! You guys walk back. Oh, uh, yes. Hooray, uh, guys. Welcome, the, the Dragons and Things Network. Shields up in chat, guys. We got raiders. Um, you guys walk back a little ways through the burn over that oily, black-sooted ash, and you hear nothing still. It is completely silent. And then all of a sudden, the wind is back. Oh, the sound's I can't, back. I can't, I couldn't hear. Hey, I couldn't hear anything. What the fuck was that shit? Wait, could you guys hear? No, I hear shit. You couldn't hear? No, no, you can hear that. Okay, oh man. All right. That's okay. weird. So we, we've got to, um, here, and I want to take out my notebook, and I will uh, pull out a few pieces of paper. I'll just rip some pages out of it and hand it to each person. Okay. And I, I have some pins on me. I always carry... That tracks. Yeah, and I don't even need a Benny for that. I, I'm you, just like, that just feels like something I have. You have a notebook, and it makes sense that you would have pens in which to write notebook things. I will hand each, I will, I'll give each of you guys a pen. I go, okay, so if we go back in there, we might not be able to hear each other, but if we need to say anything, write it on one of these and just show the others, okay? Okay, yeah. Um, should we, like, I don't know, like, film this just in case? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a great idea. We'll, you we'll you can use it. it. Hey, what if sound gets picked up on our phone? Right, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do that before we even go any further. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna start a recording. We walk in there, as soon as the sound goes away, we could turn around, come back, and see if we could hear what we were saying on the recording. Yeah, okay, yeah. Or, or if it's just in our heads. Sure. Okay. What time okay. of day is it right now? Uh, oh, it's... Clocks. I guess we have clocks. Further into the afternoon, so it's around like two thirty. Okay. Morning. Cool. We're not, cool. Great. So I'll take out my phone and just start recording. Okay. And all right. Uh, this is um, Joshua Sawyer, and I say the date and all that sort of thing, including the year. But I'm not going to say that right now, right? Um, we should have time. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's no time for the year. Uh, <laughs> and this is a uh, burn test uh, number one. Okay, so you guys have that recording going and you walk back the direction you just went uh -huh. where the sound cut out, right? Uh -huh. So you walk back that way for a little bit and then it's like you cross into a weird bubble and again, all sound cuts out. Uh... Okay, I can't hear anything. Can you guys hear anything? Again, this is from Adelaide's perspective. <laughs> Everyone is totally silent. I I'm talking into the camera of my phone. Okay, can I, in that location where it seemed like we crossed, can I like leave a, like tear off a, I think I probably have pencils or something in my bag that I could just like stick in the ground there. Sure. Okay. So you, um, as, as Sawyer is talking into his phone and Calvin is just sort of like, standing nervously there, you pull a pencil out of your backpack and you go to cross back to where the sound starts again. And as soon as you hear this ambient noise of outside, you stick a pencil uh -huh. in the ground. At the same time, Sawyer suddenly becomes audible. I'm just saying a couple words here to test. Uh, can I parallax? Uh, you hop toes. back over and he's still talking. You guys can all hear each other now at this. No, you're, it's, oh. it's like the field of silence is gone. Oh. Wait, well, I didn't move. I was still inside I know. the thing. What? Oh. 
I stuck a pencil at the ground. Uh, wait, uh, how the? I don't. You uh, wait, you guys can hear now because yeah, I can hear you. It just started up again. What'd you do? What, what, what did you do? I, I just put a, a magic in pencil or some shit. I don't know. Can I pull the pencil out? And see if anything happens. I mean, are you the future queen of England? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. You, so you pull the pencil out, and nothing seems to happen except your pencil has some weird ash and dirt on it. I don't know. All right. I, okay. It's not pencil related. Real quick, let me play this video back. So I want to try and take the video I just made and just play it back. Okay. So you play it back, and at first it starts off with you going, "All right, this is Joshua Sawyer burn test," and then all of a sudden the picture gets distorted and the sound just starts to make this weird sort of like a like a weird uh, garbled audio error that just fills out the rest of the of the oh. video and the footage is just completely distorted of your of your face like it's sort of fish in and out and then just breaking to black entirely and coming back can everyone give me a notice they roll did say at a minus 1 that the um the burn makes electronics go weird i think it's... 9 9 i got one success 17 success? 17. Okay, so you are just watching this and you're just glad, Calvin, that there is no more weird silence. Yeah. The video looks messed up. Whatever was happening didn't work, but it's not here anymore, so there's no reason for you guys to stick around here. Cool. Adelaide, you got a success with a raise. You're watching the video as you're pointing out to everyone, hey, yeah, the, Dr. Barton did say that electric equipment doesn't work super well out here. But as you're saying that, you feel like you noticed something in the video, but you couldn't hear it because you were talking at the time. Sawyer, you were watching it intently and listening, and as Adelaide is talking, you bring the phone closer to your ears, and over the of the weird distorted audio noise, for one moment, you just hear, stay. Uh, I do, can we watch wait, that wait, back? Wait, 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 I, I heard something. I'm gonna rewind it and listen again. Stay. Adelaide, Calvin, come here. Listen to this. Just be very quiet. All right. Stay. You all heard that, right? Yeah. Well, it sounded like somebody said stay. Did anyone say that? I, no, hell no. I didn't say that. No, I said parallax and Trader Joe's and a whole bunch of just other random words that I was using to test it, but I never said stay. All right, can, can we just get to this hill and then leave? I don't, I don't like this. It's just freaking me out. Okay. You guys continuing on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you start walking closer to the hill that you can see, and as you get closer to it... As we're yes. I was just looking at psych psychically sensitive. It says here that I add a plus two to all rules made to sense or communicate with supernatural beings. Mm -hmm. uh, can Adelaide, I feel like Adelaide at this point would maybe go, is there anyone here? <laughs> so I don't know if I can actually, like she's literally trying to see if she could communicate with someone who maybe is here, like a ghost. So they say they want to keep going and press on and start walking towards the hill and Adelaide, you're standing there and as they start walking away. Well, I, I think as I'm going with them, I'm not necessarily trying to do something different. You're I'm gonna just, do it while while you're yeah, moving? Yeah, like like as we're leaving, I'm gonna be like, hello. Yeah, we're here. No, I'm just like, if there's like a, a ghost here, you know? Just thought I mean, might as well try. All right, well, worth a shot, I guess. If there's a ghost or somebody, like, if you want to tell us something, um, uh, tap one of us on the shoulder. Make a spirit roll. Okay. My spirit is... Well, I got a four. Don't forget to add plus two for okay. your psychically so sensitive edge. Six. A six? Yeah. All right, so you call out, if anyone's here, tap one of us on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, you guys both see Adelaide trip over a little rock in the path and stumble forward. Adelaide, that is not what it felt like to you. It felt like all of a sudden a strong hand just shoved you between the shoulder blades forward. Hey, Ooh, whoa, yo, watch, ah, watch your foot there, man. I, I no, I, my foot, no, something pushed me. What? All right, are, are you sure something pushed you? Yes! Because uh, you, you, 
and I'm not saying I don't believe you. I don't at all, but you... No, no, I, I, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but you are a little clumsy about stuff sometimes. I don't think I'm that, that no, 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 something, something pushed me. I mean, you did ask something to push you, kind of. Okay, well, so. I did ask to push, I did, like, tap lightly. Yeah, but the ghosts don't know that shit. Okay, well. Well, that, that's that they might. It sounds to me like whatever is here wants us here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, if you need something from us, uh, you can write it uh, on this paper. What? No, they gotta take your hand or something. L let, let me let me try something. Okay. Uh, Rosa, you here? You're very far away from your car. You haven't really tested exactly how this works, but Rosa does not appear. All right. Look, let's set some quick ground rules, okay? Because it seems like there's something here that's trying to communicate with us. We need to never go off on our own. Yeah. We, we can never get separated from the other two. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and, and if anyone starts acting weird, like beyond the normal weirdness that we all know we're capable of, we need to get that person and get back out, all right? Okay. All right. Yeah, well, I mean, the hill's right there. Let's go and yeah. let's get yeah. going. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. So you guys keep moving towards the hill. Mm -hmm. And as you get to the base of it, you feel this oppressive energy in the air just start to get heavier and thicker, almost like a palpable presence that you're moving through. And as you get to the hill, all of you become certain that even though there is nothing that looks out of the ordinary about this hill, nothing that distinguishes it from the landscape in any way apart from the fact that it is a hill, you become certain, based on the way that it feels, that something is weird here. Something does not feel right here. Uh, all right, cool, here we are at the center. Okay. What are we doing, what is this? I don't know, let's take some pictures. Yeah, cool. Pictures. Yeah. All right. All right. So everyone's fanning out to take pictures with their phones. I mean. Yeah. Well, actually, while they take pictures, I'm gonna get down and just sort of start like seeing if I can like dig some stuff out of the ground or like get a sample of the the ash and the dirt here. Okay. I'm not gonna take pictures. You're not? No. Why not? Uh, I don't want to. Um, but I do want to kind of like go wherever it seems the center is, and again, you know, just say if anybody. It centers the top of the hill. Oh, we're not quite there yet? You're at the base of the hill. Oh, okay. Well, while we're here, I will still say, if anybody wants to say something, there's paper and pen. Okay, so you're taking pictures. You're just kind of like trying to feel through the earth. Will both of you give me a notice roll at a minus four? Adelaide, can you give me a notice roll at a minus six? Oh my goodness me. You aced it. Dang. Wait. I got a four. You got a four? I got an eight minus four, yeah. I got a 10. A 10? Yeah. Success I mean, with a raise. Try to reroll this. At a minus six? Yeah. I mean, you're well, walking I around asking that. people to sign your book. I need a four. I oh, aced double it again. Aced it. Ooh, uh, I got a 10. A 10? Okay. Yeah. So, um, Calvin, you take out your phone and start trying to take pictures, although your phone is acting super sluggish, as though, like, it's, even even though you offloaded all of your photos before you came out here, it's taking a real long time to take each picture. As you do that, though, you feel like you catch a glimpse of something shining just under the surface of the ash, a little glint of metal. Adelaide, you're walking around um, and treating the, the the weird, oppressive air that if anyone wants to communicate, they can sign your yearbook. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a notebook. Hags. Um, and <laughs> as you do that, you're kind of walking somewhere. around the side of the hill, keeping everyone else in view, but you also catch a glimpse of something shining from underneath the ash. And Sawyer, as you're sort of digging down through the ash, you feel something in your hand, and you lift up what looks like a buried metal badge of some kind. It looks like a star encircled in a ring. And at the bottom of it, there is a number six. Um, you both also saw a glint in the earth. 
Is there something shiny in the? Yeah. yeah. I go to where it is, or did he pick it up? This no, is, these are all different these things. Are all different. Oh, they're all different. Okay. I'm gonna look at mine and dig it. If it's under, is it like dug under the ash? You said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just sticking out a little bit. You go over and s- sort of pull it out and shake it. A s- silver badge, uh, made of metal. A star inside a circle. The number two on the bottom of it. I will also go and. The exact same thing with a number four. Uh... All right. So this is number six. That means. There's probably at least six of these, right? Everyone make a notice roll for me. Adelaide, make it at a plus two. Okay. Five. Five. Also five. Five. Eleven. Eleven. Um, you guys all kind of pull these things out of the ground. Uh, uh, sorry. Independently. Um, Adelaide, as soon as you pull yours out. It feels like the environment just sort of lightens just a little bit here. Calvin, you kind of feel something similar, like there's a slight pressure change. Sawyer, you feel the exact same thing when you pull yours out of the ground, but you happen to notice the other two pulling things up out of the earth at a similar time, and each time they do, it feels like things get a little bit lighter here. What is this thing? Right. Every time we picked one of those up, whatever the mood here is, kind of lifted. Maybe these are yeah. wards or pendants of some sort. Well, why would they be here? Maybe they couldn't go any further. Well, should we look for more? Yeah, this is number six, so we should at least check and see if there's numbers. What do you have, two and four? Yeah, yeah I so we two. need one and five. So we're missing all the odd numbers. Yeah, um, Maybe okay. there's more at the top of the hill? Um, yeah, let's just keep our eyes open. Yeah. All right. Are you guys gonna keep, like, exploring the hill looking for these? Yeah, yeah let's let's look around here. Let's do, like, one quick pass of the area to see if there's any more of them. Yeah. Okay. Everyone give me a notice roll at a minus three, now that you know what you're looking for. Crit fail. Crit fail on Calvin. Got it. Oh, boy. Minus three. Sweet. I'm gonna use a Tavola reroll. Got it. All right. Adelaide and Sawyer are rerolling. Benny for Adelaide. No. I get an eight. An eight. All right. Um. So, Adelaide, mm-hmm. you uh you failed, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're you're kind of walking around the hill, keeping an eye on your friends, looking for any glint of something metallic. You see nothing. Mm -hmm. Calvin, you think you see something shiny, but as you get closer, you see it was just the sun reflecting off like a grain of quartz or something on a rock. But as you're down there, there's a small little gust of wind that blows a cloud of ash up into your face and into your eyes. And some of it just gets inside your eye and you just desperately start blinking to break it out. But it's gonna cause you to suffer a minus one penalty on all. I got some eye, I got. What? I got some eye. Are you okay? No, we gotta go. We gotta go, I don't like this. Oh, okay. You see two more glints of metal in the earth. Wait, 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 guys. Higher up on the hill, you find 11. Oh. And five. 11. Damn it, there might be a lot more of these than we expected. Yeah, but what are they? Like, this star in a circle looks kind of Texas-y. Yeah, it's a little bit like a like a sheriff's badge or something. Or like a ranger badge. You know, like the Texas Rangers. Right? They don't got big old numbers on them. Well, no, yeah, usually they're, yeah, but I mean, that's just what it makes me think of. Well, should we take these and head up the hill maybe? I guess so. Yeah, just like keep looking for them, I guess. Again though, as he pulls those out of the earth, it's like things just get a little bit less dark on top of this hill. Honestly, maybe we should just make sure we have as many of these as possible before we go any further. Sure, I mean, it does feel like better with them. I feel like safer or something, I don't know. Yeah, that's weird though, Yeah, right? yeah. They're just like garbage or something. Okay, let's like, uh, I don't know, why don't we like maybe go around the hill a little bit and see if we can find more before we go up. Yeah, sure. 
Okay, so you guys are going to s spend some dedicated time searching for things. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, so you are still going to be at a penalty because of the dense blanket of ash. Um, but you don't all each have to do it. You can make support rolls with sure. each other. So how do you want to search? Let's support Sawyer. And this is going to take a fair amount of time. There's a lot of area on this. So this is going to take probably uh, the bulk of the rest of your daylight hours just to comb over this hill. Well, can, can we set like a limit so that we can head up onto the hill before yeah. it like starts to get dark? That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, we'll, we'll try and set so we still have time to go up the hill before it gets dark. We want to have time to go up the hill before it gets dark and go back before it gets dark. Okay, <laughs> I'll just set a timer for like 4 p.m. We'll start heading back then. Yeah. Sure. All right. Okay. Yeah. So you set a timer, Calvin. Um, so you're, you're supporting him? Yes. Okay, so how are you supporting uh, him? With notice. Notice? Yeah. It's a three. Okay, extra credit to reroll. Come on. Don't do this to me again. Ah, there we go. You aced it. Aced Way it. over there. Yeah, for some reason. Uh, that's a seven. A seven. <sighs> okay, so that's going to be a plus one. Are you supporting Calvin? Yes, but I don't, I don't want to do it with notice because my eyes are gunk. So yeah, I'm they're going watering to, up. Yeah, I'm going to use uh, my phone's flashlight to help light the way, and hopefully that reflection will uh, catch his eye. Okay, sure. so uh, electronics. give me electronics. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, nope. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. Not, not gonna do it. Okay, so a plus one. So you're operating at a minus two altogether. Okay. I got a, that's just a straight three. A straight three, all right. Rerolling with a Benny. Let's get a Kirby. Better. Aced it on a Aced D10. It. Oh. Much better. Okay, so that's a 14. A 14. Yeah. A 14 is a success with two raises. Tight. So. As you guys spend some time sort of combing up and down the sides of this hill and walking around it, you find badge number one. Oh. Badge number three. And badge number 13. It's like collector's things now. Yeah, cool. How many are there? I mean, there's 13 so far. Yeah, I mean, we don't necessarily know that they have every number in between, but... Yes. Well, I mean, you, so, you, you guys were doing the research. Like, does this mean anything? What are these? What are these? So you had number two. Yeah, I got two. And you had number four. It's starting to feel almost normal in this area. Although, Adelaide, that prickling sensation at the back of your skull just keeps getting more and more intense. Oh. All right. I don't know. It does feel better, but I still, something doesn't feel right here. So we have eight badges, and at there's probably at least thirteen. I think at this point maybe we just need to head up the hill so we can get to the center before we have to go back. Yeah. Maybe the professor will know more about what these could be. Maybe. Do you guys feel like maybe this is like a big burial mound or some, something? Like these belong oh, to somebody? Shit, I hope not. Are we wearing these to their grave, man? Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's go to the center. All right. Okay. Okay. So you guys walk up this hill, and it's not a super huge hill, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time for you guys to get to the top. And when you are at the top, you can see a fair amount of the burn arrayed out around you in all directions. Uh, you can see isolated uh, duos and trios of the other uh, students who are out here just sort of like combing around every now and then stopping down to like point something out to someone or anything like that. Um, but nothing feels any different up here. Can we search up here on the top? Absolutely. Give me a notice roll at a minus two. Should we maybe support your search? You can. I'll use notice. <laughs> no! Not supporting. She didn't. Nope. Nope. All right. So it's a minus two? Yes. So I just got a six. A six. You do indeed see a glint of metal up here. Look. Oh. Badge hey. number 12. Hmm. Pretty good with this. <laughs> Don't need a metal detector. We got you around. So we've got nine badges. We haven't seen anything above 13, and 13 is a number that has a certain level of significance. 
Yeah, not good significance, though. Yeah, well, do, do you think we can maybe try and find the last four? Do we have time? Uh, How much time do we have left? About an hour. Let's try. I don't see anything else up here unless we want to like dig into the ground. Yeah, gotta all right. catch them all. Let's do it. Let's 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 do this. Um, uh, or organized. Okay. Uh, we we've, we've focused mostly on this area where we came up. Maybe if we kind of take this hill and divide it into quadrants, uh, we can just cover ground a little more efficiently. Sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, so you're, it sounds like everyone's no, doing their own individual yes. notice rules. I kind of figured we'd each kind of go without getting out of eye sight I, I, of yeah. each other. Okay, so you start at the top of the hill and you all sort of like back to back start walking in opposite directions down the hill, being careful not to get out of eyesight of each other. Yes. Everyone give me a notice roll at a minus two. Calvin, yours will be at a minus three. Oh my god. Hey, Nikki? I, I can't. So, yeah. I got a seven. You got a seven? Ma! At a minus two? Yes. Spending a point of extra credit to reroll. Well, that was Benny. Or sorry, Benny. Yay! Yay! There it is. Nice. Yay, uh, so far away. Nine? Nine? Yeah. I got a failure. A failure. All right, you're still trying to get this little bit of ash out of your eye, and you're walking down the hill. You don't see anything. Um, Sawyer, again, you kick a little ash as you're walking down, and something tumbles out of it. Another one of those badges, number five. Where do you have number five? Uh, not number five. That's not what I meant. I meant number eight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, looks like a five for a moment. It did. Definitely an it's eight. It's an eight when you clear away the grime. Uh, Adelaide, you find two of these things in the ground. You find number nine and number ten. Hey, I, I found nine and ten. I just need one more then. Yeah, which one are we missing? 12 All we're missing, or... we have one, two, three, four, five. I think we're, uh, I found six first. I think we're missing number seven. Seven, okay. I didn't see it over here. Wanna we'll keep looking? We got yeah. about another half hour. Yeah, let's keep looking. Okay. All right. Everyone give me another notice roll at a minus two. And All this right. is you're gonna be, this is gonna be your last chance. Let's just hope that this isn't, you know, number 14. Because that would be frustrating. Obo Cop, thank you very much for the tip. I got a four, but I'm going to reroll it to try and do better. Okay, spending a penny to reroll. What did you guys get? A zero. Zero? I got, I got a one, but I was. A one. I only have one reroll left, so. I got a six. I'll, 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 I'll stay with that. Okay, you guys spend some more time up on top of this hill looking around and find nothing. And now. Your alarm is going off, Calvin. It's time to go. All right, let's head back, but... I don't know, at least keep an eye out on our way back. Yeah, hey, we can always come back some other time, all right? Oh, we're so close. So close to what, though? I don't know, just ha having all of them, whatever the significance is, there's a reason they were numbered, right? Don't you want to know? I guess, but I also want to go back and not be here anymore. Yeah. We can come back, it's cool. Come back. Okay. Sure. We leave. Okay, so you guys leave and you head back for your camp. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it takes a little while for you guys to get back there, but eventually um, you are able to make it out of the burn and head back out into the woods where uh, that oppressive feeling just sort of starts to just flow away from you and you <sighs> feel like you can breathe, like a weight you didn't know was on your chest has been lifted. However, Making it back to the camp uh, where some of the other students are already there and the rest are sort of straggling in, everyone feels very quiet. Everyone seems a bit withdrawn and quiet and sort of not wanting to make eye contact with other people around them. You guys get the distinct impression that you were not the only ones who encountered something unusual while out exploring the burn. Um, Matt, the young bespectacled man who was in your van, sees you guys coming. Oh, hey, hey, um, it, it looks like Dr. Barton's still not feeling good, so his assistant Colin's taking over. Uh, we're just supposed to eat and then get ready for the night. Um, I think the contest about who found cool stuff or whatever is going to have to wait for the morning. Oh, okay. 
Well, did you find anything? Nope. No, you didn't find like <coughs> any shiny metal things? No. Oh, I, it's just a... I, I didn't do a whole lot of looking around. I just sort of walked around for a bit and then came back here. Okay. Um, right. Can I read his aura? Yeah. Um, spirit roll to minus two. I can't read his aura. Okay, so you try and get a read on Matt, but it feels like being out in the burn for as long as you did and that weird feeling in the base of your skull hasn't completely left you. It's, you, you don't feel completely yourself. You feel a bit out of sorts and you're not able to get much of a picture from him. Techno Gur, thank you very much Gur. for the tip. Techno Gur. Techno Gur. Thank you. Hey y'all, I'm gonna take a leak, all right? I don't wanna take a leak back there in that creepy place, but yeah, okay. yeah I'm gonna take a leak right now. Oh yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I think a lot of people have uh, the boys have been going off that direction, and the uh, the girls. I think uh, Colin or or somebody dug us a pit over this, here. This way. Yeah, right. that way. Cool. Thanks. Okay, Lady Amago, thank you very much. Thank for you, the tip. Thanks, Lady Amago. Um, so everybody just sort of silently starts getting their their meals out, and uh, a campfire gets lit as the sun goes down over the horizon, and night comes on over the big thicket. Um, you guys feel like there's just this weird, somber energy over everyone. Even, even Derek, who before was very boisterous, is kind of keeping mostly to himself. Um, people pass around a bag of marshmallows and chocolate and graham crackers, and some people sort of half-heartedly roast, uh, themselves some s'mores over the fire, but... No one seems that interested in doing a whole lot of talking or uh, partying or anything at all. And one by one, people start sort of peeling off to their tents. Doesn't it seem like everyone is being really weird? Yeah, I mean, you felt what it was like out there. Yeah. They, they probably felt the same thing, but a lot of these people like don't have the experiences we have to, I don't know, ground them in this stuff. But like... If it was just that if they felt weird, wouldn't they just be back and be like, oh, that was weird. But it, it seems like something bad happened to everybody, like that they're embarrassed about or, or, or something. Oh. Here's a thought. Where's uh, where's Derek? He's a pretty high-spirited guy. BSB Care, thank you very much for thank the tip. You. Thank you, BSB Care. Is, uh, is Derek, has he gone to his tent? Derek has not. He's he's just kind of like sitting over by the fire, uh, talking to another one of the students in sort of like low, hushed tones. I want to go over to them. Okay. And we, we, we have the um, the pendants or badges or whatever on yeah. us, right? Yeah. Hey, uh... Oh. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, uh, are you guys feeling okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. It just kind of feels wiggy here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just I, sort of, like, you know, spooky. This is, this, uh, might sound a little superstitious, but I, uh, I have these, these things that I carry around that just kind of, like, they, they can help boost your confidence a little bit when things, like, feel strange. Uh, here. Why don't you hold on to one? Uh, what is this, like a like a rabbit's foot or something? It's a little bit like that, yeah. All right, yeah. Here, just... So you hand over one of the badges, and he takes it and kind of looks at it for a little bit. Is this like a, like a souvenir or something from like a, one of them like Wild West towns or something? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a, something like that. Do you feel any better? Uh, I know it's a weird question. Yeah, but... man, a little bit. But, you know, I don't want to hog all your juju, so, yeah, I'll just get that guy back to you. Uh, sure. You don't even need to make a roll. It Did definitely not... seems like he's <laughs> just trying to make you feel better about your weird superstition. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I could definitely see how that would help some people. Yeah. yeah. Ancient Egyptian Curse, thank you very much for the tip. Thank you. Thanks, Ancient Egyptian Curse. Yo, what's oh, up? and BSB Care, I think you already said that. But... I did. What's up with the vibe here? What's going on? I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. You noticed that too, huh? I, I don't know. I just feel like people were, I don't know. Everybody, everybody had like a, a weird kind of day. Everybody definitely make it back? Yeah. Yeah, everybody's here, Did I think. you have a weird day? 
No, nah, just kind of out, you know, walking around with uh, my buddy Matt and... Uh... Can I try to read his aura? Sure. <laughs> Ooh, I aced it. Nice job. I just had a moment where I was like, why do I have this card here? And I almost flipped it Don't over. Don't you dare. And I didn't do it. Five. <laughs> Five? Yes. Um, you get the distinct impression that there is this sort of lingering low level sort of film of fear hmm. over, over Dr Derek's aura. Did something scare you out there today? Because it scared me. Scare? What's scary about like a big open place? I don't know. It felt like so like at one point, I was pretty sure someone pushed me, but there was no one there. Like, and I thought I heard somebody like talking, but it wasn't like any of the people I was with. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes mind plays tricks on you and stuff. Nothing but, like uh, that happened to you? Like, freaked you out? I don't know, man. You know, it's just a big, like, weird, quiet place. Like, you, Imagination goes wild. I, listen, guys, I'm, I'm getting pretty tired. I think I'm probably gonna head in. Hey, you seen a uh, you seen Ariel around? Uh, I think she was trying to talk to Kyle earlier, and then he went to his tent, and she went to her. You know which tent that uh, she's in? Uh, she already turned for the night, or? What, man? You got uh, you got your eye on her or something? Oh, uh... Because I think, uh, I, I've been trying to pick up on this this whole time, but I'm getting a distinct impression that she's single. Yeah, yeah, real single, yeah. Yeah, maybe, you know, I just want to see if we had a connection, just... All right, cool, but you know it's not cool just to let yourself into someone else's tent, no, right? No, yeah, no, I, I, I ain't no creep, I ain't doing that. I just want to know if she's up, you know. Oh, uh, I don't know, she went over into her tent over there a little while back. All right, I'll just give her a knock. Okay. Cool, All right. thanks, man. Night, guys. And Derek turns and goes to his tent. So you're going to go over to Ariel's tent? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll knock. So you tent. sort of like Scratch. ineffectively slap your hand against the Yo, canvas uh, of the tent. Uh, oh my god, uh, hello? So, uh, sorry, it's me. I, uh, you, you up in there? Sorry. I, I, didn't... Uh, well, I mean, I, I was getting changed. I'm awake now. So oh, someone shit. started pawing at the outside of my... You, uh, who is this? Uh, it's Calvin. Uh, it's just uh, one of the guys out here. So, uh, oh, from the, the van. Yeah, yeah, from the van. Yeah, yeah. it's me. Uh, can I help you? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to check in, make sure everybody's okay. I'm just going around making sure everybody's cool. You, you, you see anything weird out there today? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine in here. Thank, thanks. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some sleep. Oh, all right. Uh, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your concern. Could I tell if she's okay through her? I didn't see her, so I guess not. Can you tell if she's okay? From her voice? What are you trying to... Well, give me a notice roll. Is she trying to hide anything? Give me a notice roll. <clears throat> I aced it. Yay! I got a 10. Um, a 10, which is a success with a race. Um, she is... When you asked her if she had seen anything weird or anything weird had happened to her, there was a definite, like, pause before she continued on. But other than that, she seems fine. Uh, e everyone around the camp seems to have seen or experienced something at least unsettling. That's the definite vibe that you're picking up on. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, if you want to, you know, just talk about anything, because I saw some freaky shit out there too, and I just want to see if anybody else did. <laughs> I, I'm not really in the mood for ghost stories. I, I'm just going to try and get some rest. I'm really tired. All right, yeah, cool. Good night. Night. Um... Also, at this point, we have unlocked another mystery box card. Ooh. So let me go ahead and dip into the box of Woo. mystery. Dip in there, baby. What do you see? Um. Uh oh. This will come into effect when now. it does. Oh, now! Ah! Gotcha. <laughs> I did it wrong, Calvin. Uh oh. As you are um, turning to walk away from her tent, you notice just outside the tent uh, what looks like. A can of energy drink. No, no. Drink it. But you did find it, and you're feeling a little. Uh, you're feeling a little run down. You decide to just lean down, pop that bad boy, and chug it down. It tastes pretty good, actually. It's okay. uh, for an energy drink, especially. It's got a really nice sort of like natural flavors kind of kind of taste. And you turn the label around, and you see, oh shit! It doesn't say energy drink. It says lethargy drink. 
No! A random PC finds an energy drink uh. that is actually meant to be used as a sleep aid. Their strength die drops by one and their pace as well for 24 hours. Oh and that God. comes from the Husman. Huh. So you're down one pace and down one strength die type, Calvin, as you are feeling a real sleepy. That sounds like a badly made energy drink. That's lethargy drink. Lethargy drink. Energy drink. Lethargy drink. Lethargy drink. I'm sleepy. Uh, Calvin is getting sleepy, and now that the sun has gone down for a while and the fire is burning low, you all become aware of how dark it is out here. Uh, there are less people out by the fire, and more and more people are heading into their tents, uh, and it's getting kind of spooky out here. Damn. Calvin also seems to be having a hard time keeping his eyes open. Uh, we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't have come in so early. We were so close. We were just missing one of them. As far as we know, I do not want to be out there when it gets this dark, man. Look at it. You can't see shit. What if it's important? What if it's just a bunch of garbage, man? You you know that's not the case. When we picked these up, we felt something different. Yeah, but I, what do you want me to? You want to go out there in the dark and look for the last one? I don't know. Maybe. What? No, that's fucking stupid, man. We'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, maybe we can have some time to go down there tomorrow. Let's just can we start a fire. Something's really fucking dark. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the I fire's have a, burning down. I have a... Oh, there uh, was a fire. I'll just yeah. turn on my phone light. Anti-technology roll. Oh, wow. God. I'm not afraid of the dark, right, anymore? I keep getting... Afraid. Not the dark, no, just sourceless whispers. <laughs> I got a six. Uh, the phone works mostly okay. So you turn the light on on your phone, but it's like your battery's running low or something. The light's pretty dim and doesn't shine out very much. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're gonna agitate all the raccoons out there. At, at this point, uh, the last one of the students, other than the three of you, has turned and left and gone into their tent. There's not really much else happening out here as the fire burns down to cinders. All right, I'm, I'm gonna turn in, y'all. There's not much we can do right now, right? I mean, I don't even know what we're doing. We found those things, but... Yeah. How, how far was it back to the hill? About an hour or so. Yeah, it's a, probably too far to this mother. go out now. So close. To what? To finding all of them. And then what? Achievement unlocked. Ghost kills you. I know you like video games and you want to like, you're a completionist for the video games, but this is like dangerous. Yeah, man, this ain't Skyrim, yo. This is real life. All right. But as soon as we get a chance tomorrow, we need to get back there. There was yeah. something going on there besides just a strange moment of silence. What do you want to happen once you get the last one? I don't know, They'll but... float in the air and summon the ghost of Sheriff... Calvin, we won't know until we find it. And that's what drives me crazy. You know what? Maybe it's about what we didn't find. Maybe it's about that one we didn't find. Maybe that's what we need to look into. Is that number, what was it, seven? Seven. I don't know. But we can't do much tonight. Yeah, all right, I'm, I'm, t I'm turning. I'm, I'm, my eyes can't stay open. Yeah. Guys heading into sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants a nightcap? We got some shots bought for us. Hey! Those red solo cups. Oh, Elias Nyber bought us a shot. The burn is the sacred site where Ron Tagoth will come to the earth and devour us all. Hooray! Raise up and chug! Yeah. Thank you very much, Elias. And Ron isn't here. That's my poor drink all Clink. over myself. Uh, Ovo Cop bought us a shot. Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> or do we? Raise them up and chug! chug. Thank you very much, Obo Cop. They're just red herrings, it's fine. An ancient Egyptian curse bought us a shot. Mm -hmm. Soon, all the other ancient evil will arise. <laughs> Can you withstand this burn? burn. Raise them up and chug. chug! Thank you very much, ancient Egyptian curse. So you guys head into your tent and um, get ready for bed, get your blankets and pillows or whatever you brought with you to, uh, to sleep out here, and Go to sleep. Uh huh. Yep. Do roll you, to go to sleep. Do you want a sleep roll? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, goody. But I would like a notice roll. Oh, you want an awake from roll? From those of you who are asleep in the middle of the night. Is this eye based? <gasps> oh, that's cocked. <laughs> no, it is not eye based. <laughs> oh, my. I got a five. No, I got a seven. Extra credit One to reroll for Adelaide. Okay, I got a, and a minus what? Nothing. Okay, I got a five. A five? And you got a seven? Mm -hmm. Um, at some point in the night, you all 
feel yourselves swimming back to consciousness. You're not entirely sure what it is that woke you up. Maybe some noise from outside. You are not used to sleeping in tents after all. And as you are struggling to figure out where you are and what's going on, you hear, and then what sounds like muttering. Muttering. What is that? Coming Shit. from out in the middle of the campsite. It sounds like something heavy hitting something wet. All right. And then that weird low muttering voice. I want to grab my hammer and then start to quietly unzip the tent. Okay. Give me a stealth roll. Can't re-roll anything anymore. Good thing you aced it. Swad Derza, thank you very much. For thank you. I got a five. Five? Sawyer sits up and grabs his hammer, and in the dark, though your eyes are still adjusting, you see him start to reach for the zipper on the tent, and very, very slowly, trying not to make too much noise, start pulling the zipper open. As you're pulling that open, you hear the muttering more clearly, that heavy, wet sound repeating, and that muttering, strange, low voice. And Sawyer, looking out into the campsite, there's very, very little ambient light, but it looks like there is someone hunched over by the ring of stones around the campfire, and they appear to just be rhythmically bringing their hand down on to something on the ground, which is making that wet noise. I want to open the, the tent and go out towards it. Okay. Sorry, what do you see? There's someone out there. Well, wait, you should go by yourself. Just be quiet. You be quiet. So you're walking out of the tent and over there? Give me another stealth roll. Ooh. Seven. Seven? You step out into the darkness, and it looks like, as far as you can tell, you are behind whoever is hunched over there, and still that wet sound as it brings something down onto something in front of it and continues to mutter to itself. But as you listen, the voice changes. Sometimes it is low and whispery. Sometimes it's high and lilting. It's changing almost every time you hear it. And now that you're standing outside of the tent, you see that it looks like someone is hunched over someone lying flat on the ground. It cannot be stopped. Ravage your world. I want to get closer. Give me another stealth roll. What are you guys I'm doing? I'm gonna follow him. You're following him? Yeah. Anyone following him? Give me a stealth roll. Okay. I grab my bat. You grab your bat? And I follow. Is that a crit fail? Nope. He oh, rolled a, a three. regular a three that I can't. I've chosen re-roll. not to follow now. Nope. <laughs> oh! That's a crit fail. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. My stealth is a d6. I don't know why I'm rolling anymore, just to see if I do not fail. I do fail. Everyone fails. So you guys hear this sound. You see Sawyer moving out of the tent and, and starting to move closer into the clearing. And Calvin, you kind of get up and, and you get tangled in your blanket and start to move forward. As you do, Adelaide runs into the back of you and shoves you out of the oh, tent shit. as she falls over on top of you Adelaide, you hit your head on the ground as you do, oh. dazing yourself and shaking yourself. Oh and Sawyer, oh. you also get knocked into by Calvin and stumble forward, oh. and the figure goes completely rigid. And then slowly turns its head over its shoulder, and you see two eyes 
like burning coals turn and gleam at you in the night. It's Dr. Barton, but it's not Dr. Barton. His skin has gone completely dark and ashy, and you see what looks like claws tipping the ends of his fingers as the red shining light from his eyes gleams as he turns around and you see in his hand is what looks like a slick wet rock as he is leaning over the prone body of Kyle whose head has been completely smashed in. I need all of you to give me a fear roll. Oh no. Fear of spirit? Yes. Nine. Nine. Six. Six. Four. Four. All right, all of you are able to just stagger back after seeing what you see, but he looks at you and you see his mouth split his face in the night, the whites of his teeth gleaming in the darkness, and he said, you only delayed it. Now it is our time, and he leaps at you guys. We are in a combat. Well, it had to happen eventually. We have to kill a teacher. Have we not already killed a teacher? Why don't we just knock him out? Sawyer? You think we hadn't, but... Are you taking cards, or are you going to use yours? This is it, baby. Let's flip it! Y'all ready? Activate your... Two! Two of clubs! Sorry, it could have been a joker, but you are stuck with that two, Sawyer. Adelaide, it's okay, a get jack the calculating of hearts. Yeah. Eight of hearts for you, Calvin. Four of hearts for Dr. Barton. And I will go ahead and give him his bennies. Okay. And you know what? I'll go ahead and spend one of those right away to Ooh. draw another card. A nine of spades. Damn. Is this from the same deck? No. I didn't want to give it to you and mix it up. All right. He turns and snarls ferally at you guys and then leaps in your direction. You can see around the campsite, other campers are are peering out of their tents. One of them sees Kyle's lifeless body on the ground and screams. Adelaide, you are up first. What do you want to do? Unshake. All right. Give me a spirit roll to unshake. Spirit? I thought it was bigger. Nope, that's to soak. Damn it! Sprit roll. I can never get that straight but in my head. Good for you. Got it. Seven. All right, you unshake. You manage to bring snap back to yourself. The adrenaline coursing through your body at this thing oh, in front of you brings you back and focused, but you don't know what you're gonna do I next. Think I'm what are you going to do? Stupidly going to try to reason with it. Okay. Oh. I'm yeah. I'll just be like, Doctor, Doctor Barton. Eh, uh, this isn't you. There's something in there you can fight and 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 get past it. Okay, what skill are you using for that? Persuade? Yeah! Give me a persuade roll. <laughs> okay. Yeah! Oh, hey. I aced it! Oh, thank God, I aced it. I got a 10! A 10? 10, yeah. Woo-hoo. Okay. Uh, and that was persuade, right? Yeah. I aced it. No! <laughs> I also got a 10. Oh. Um, Dr. Oh, Barton man. stops in his movement and just sort of stands there for a moment and his head twitches and then he smiles. Yes, yes, no need, no need. We will come. You will see first. Oh, and he heads no, for you. No, no, Hand in your card. Next up is Dr. Barton. He leaps for you, Adelaide, and his claws (laughs) extended, he just slashes out with both of his arms. So he taunted him. I got an ace on that. You started further and further away. An 11. (laughs) All right, that is going to be, what is your parry? Five. Yeah, that's going to be a hit with a raise. All right, so he is going to slash you. Trying to be nice. It looks like it kind of worked. Like, ooh, oh, that's a, okay, good. 14 damage. What is your toughness? It's a five. A five, so that's going to be a success with two raises. Okay, so this is bigger. All right, so you're gonna you're gonna soak it. Yes. All right. You did not make it. That's a flailure. <laughs> I don't have any, nope, okay. All right, your last Benny to re-roll. Come on, Eddie, Hey come guys, on, this would be a great time to take advantage of September. That's two twos. <laughs> that is two twos. There is one table Reroll. Yup. 
Yeah. One Benny in the form of the cheat token. How many hits is this on you? Two. She'd two. be shaken and take two wounds. I feel like you should use it. Okay. Relative D-Pod, thank you thank very much you, for the tip. Hey, thanks for Relative D-Pod. Thank you. Okay. I'll use it. You can, you can okay. Use it. Oh, I aced it! You aced it! Thank God. Ten! Oof. Ten! Ten! That is a success with a raise, so you soak all of it. So he leaps at you, his long fingernails slashing out, and you see his body seems to have encroached in on itself and gotten denser and more compact, but he is moving with a lot of force, and you just barely manage to stagger back into the side of your tent without collapsing into it, his claws passing inches in front of your face, and the re-roll, the cheat token was used as a Benny, which means these three points of extra credit from Shimmickson go to me, oh, the D. No! Thank you very much, Shimmickson. North of Valhalla, thank you very much for the it. sub. Thank you. What Defract, J. Womack94, and Stuart Dean, and Yum Springa, thank you for those. Uh, and Beria, thank you for the sub. Those were gifted by? Vampire 54. Vampire 54. Thank, thank you very much, Vampire 54. Hey, y'all, tell them which ones of us you want to give the rerolls to. Yeah. Dean doesn't need it. Nah, give it to the Dean. And he's he got four. Slashes out at you as you stagger back into the tent and says, You only delayed the convergence! What? You're up next. Uh, I'm gonna hit a home run. You're gonna run at him with the bat? Oh, yeah. Swing away, okay. Calvin. Swing away. <laughs> All right, good give rap. me a fighting roll. Solid ref. <laughs> Uh, fighting is a good thing that I have. Here we go. That's not good. That's no, terrible. No, that's very bad. <laughs> that's that's very bad. Two. Extra credit to reroll. Yeah, you yes. it. I'll take this one. Well, I'll Woo! take this one. Yay! You aced it. Uh, uh, hit with a race. Whatever it is, probably. 17, yeah, that's going to be a hit with a race. All right, so um, roll strength plus d6 for the bat plus another d6. Okay, and my strength. Did you say you lowered my strength die? Yeah, your strength die has oh, been lowered one by the lethargy. Man! Drink. Balls! <laughs> that sucks. Uh, so 10. 10? With a bat, with a baseball bat, 10 bat. So you just run up to him while he's talking to Adelaide, and you just slug him in the back right between the shoulders yeah. with the baseball bat, and he. <laughs> just kind of moves forward. You have shaken him. La, la, That's la, it? La, la, la. Woo. And he turns his head without turning most of the rest of his body. And uh -huh. you hear bones and vertebrae cracking in his neck as his head turns most of the way around over his shoulder as those glowing eyes zero in on you, Calvin. Don't you worry, I'm gonna fix that for you. You're up next. And I, I see him turn towards Calvin and I, uh, run out of the other side and just <laughs> bring the hammer down on him twice, and I want to attack him twice. You want to attack him twice? Yes. Okay, so you're going to be at a minus two for both of these attacks. But not the first one, because I'm using calculated, so I don't have that minus two. Okay, so a no penalty, and then a minus two for your second Ooh, attack. Wow. Yes. The Gaming Chef, and Phil Filippo Witch, 2521, and oh ninth US President, oh and Ace oh Mail. Thank you oh very much for Thanks. the subs. Uh, Huntel, Hunt, Hunter, L. Roar 91 gifted those subs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so this is my first one with first no penalty. First fighting roll, no penalty. Come on. Come on, roll good. It's a four. Does what? that hit? It does not. It's a parry. Son of a... So you come up behind him and slash out with the hammer, and you just see his glowing eyes just kind of dart over to you as he moves to the side, and you hear more bones crack and break in his body as his, uh. as his spine contorts back oh, to dodge God. the blow. Make your second attack okay, at a minus one two. Okay, is at a minus two. Mm, not gonna do it. It's a three. You slash out again with the hammer and he just throws an arm up and sends your arm flying back. It's all you can do to hang on to the hammer without sending it off into the darkness. Hand in your card. Next round. Four of spades or a four of diamonds. I'll go with the four of spades. You got it. Jack of clubs, four of clubs. Damn it! He gets a ten of diamonds. Damn it! The meanwhile, other students are seeing what's happening now, and they, uh, awakened by the scream and the noises, some of them step out of the tents and turn on the lights on their cell phones, uh, which are now blazing confusingly and disorientingly all around in the darkness, but people have seen Kyle's dead body and they see the professor attacking you guys, and people are freaking out. Some people have have gone back into their tents. Other people are just sort of backing away from everything. Everyone seems way more freaked out than they appear capable. So next up, Adelaide. 
Uh, is the fire still burning at all? No. How far is the fire pit? Uh, the fire pit's not far away, um, but it's it's burned down mostly, at least not that you can see. It, it's possible there might be some fire still underneath the top layer of ash. Okay, well, I want to try to get a, a log out of the fire. Okay, uh, so you run over to the, to the fire pit. Uh, Dr. Barton is distracted by the hammer slashes that Sawyer is taking at him, and you're just going to reach in with your bare hands and pull out a log? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, give me a notice roll. That's not enough. So you you look over there and you you look into the fire pit and all you see is dead ash. Not, everything in here has burned down to nothing and you start sifting through it. It's even cool to the touch. There is absolutely nothing of value left in the fire pit. Hand in your card. He's next, right? He is. So I yell at him. I, I yell something like, there's no, it's like, we've already stopped you. Or I say something to try and goad him because I want to use my action card to make him use villainous verbosity to talk about his master plan. All right, so you shout out that <laughs> he's already been stopped. Mm -hmm. And his jaw just opens as you say that, and you hear <laughs> as, his, as it separates from the rest of his face and just hangs down. You delayed the convergence. You did not stop it. The ley lines converge. The convergence returns and he just stands there staring and screaming at you as he says this, but that will waste his turn. Well played, Sawyer. Next up, Sawyer. Uh, I'm gonna bring the hammer up in an uppercut and uh, hit him twice again. You're gonna try and slash out twice with him. Yeah, and when he's talking to me, I'm just gonna <laughs> try and bring it up on his jaw that's already broken. Okay. Not actually a called shot, but that's the flavor. You still have your calculating bonus, so the first one's at no penalty, second attack's at a minus two. Come on, roll good. There it is. Yes! Aced it. Uh, so that's a seven. Seven will hit. Yes, okay. So I'm hitting with the hammer, so. Uh, that's gonna be strength plus a d4. Okay, uh, it, that's d6 and a d4. Hmm, that's four only four. damage. Yeah. Okay, so you bring the hammer up and he just pull, puts an arm in the way and it connects solidly like hitting a, an, a plank of wood and he doesn't seem to really feel it. But you bring the hammer back around, shift it to your other hand and strike again. Oh, failed. Yeah, that swings wide as he continues to move and dodge, heading for Calvin. Cool. Hand in your card. Calvin, you're up next. Okay. Here's what I want to try and do. I want to take oh, that. Oh, and what defract would like to give a point of extra credit to Adelaide. Thank I will you. hand these out as soon as I see them. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to take that badge out, that number two badge, and use it as a baseball. I want to throw it up and hit it at him. Okay. These might be important, though. Yep. I'm gonna call that an athletics attack. We're just gonna call that a throwing attack. Cool. I'm gonna say it is throwing at a minus, or athletics at a minus two. Okay. Uh, because you are trying to hit the badge. But if you do strike it, I will give you some extra damage. I like it. Okay. So just in the middle of everything, you pull a badge out of your pocket, throw it up in the air, and then just try and smash it right at him. This shit better do something good. Athletics minus two. Okay. Nice. Aced oh. it. I got a 10 minus two, which is an eight. Okay, so I will give you uh, an eight with a ranged attack is a hit with a raise. Okay. So Woo. strength plus a d6 okay. plus a d4. Okay. I just need another d4. I'm gonna borrow this. Uh, okay, so that is uh, nine so far. Okay. And then uh, 10. 10. Yes. All right. So you throw this badge up in the air and just crack it into him, and it goes whistling through the air across the space between you as he's distracted with Sawyer. It hits him right in the back of the neck, and the pin on it just stabs into, into the, the flesh of his neck. And he screeches out. He was already shaken. So now he takes one wound. Dude. Home run, baby. And he scrabbles for the back of his neck trying to feel what attacked him, and you, you hear more cracking and twisting as his body just spasms around. Ooh. Hand in your card. Okay. Is that everyone? That's everyone. Next round. Sawyer. 
three or a two? <laughs> I'll go with the three. You got it. Better than a two. Boy. Adelaide, ace of diamonds. <laughs> Calvin, eight of clubs. He gets an ace oh, of spades. Oh. Does anyone else want to spend a penny Damn. to re-roll or redraw their card? No, I could. Okay, so the Calvin first thing he has table. to do is unshake. Really? Yes. Yeah. No, he's got some. All right, well, so. Yeah. <laughs> he's got all of his. He's at a minus one because of his wound. Ooh. He does unshake. Ugh. He pulls that out and just turns towards you, Calvin. Oh, shit. The ley lines converge. The convergence returns, and he leaps at you and just tries to slash at you. He's going to wild attack. Oh, no. He crit fail, crit fail, crit fail. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. He crit fails. Woo. So as he leaps out to do that, his body had not twisted all the way around yet, and you just hear it oh. as his feet do not seem to follow his torso. It's like he's learning how to move in this body for the first time. And he twists in the air oh. and falls to the ground. He shakes himself. I have a question. Yes. When he was going for him, did he have to leave me? Uh, well, he would have if he hadn't fallen to the ground and shaken himself. You know what? Yes, actually. He <laughs> did leap. I'll give you a free attack. All right. Yes, paste I it on, on the D4. Four. Okay. Ooh, that other one yeah. Oh! Paste again. Well, that, that was not a third roll. That was just dropping it. Okay, so that's that's 11. That's a hit with a raise. Yeah. He leaps away from you. With your hammer, you just lash out one more time. So roll strength plus D4 plus an additional D6. Hammer time, Sawyer, come on. I, uh, well, based that's on the D4. Four, so that's, that's one, two, three. Seven so far? Yeah. yeah. Oh, ace again, again on the D4, D4. 11. Ace, 11, baby. Oh, no, it's another ace on the D4. Okay, oh. 15. We're really good with hammers. Oh, wow. 19, <laughs> another ace on the D4. And that's a two. So 21. Wow. 21. I give you damage. a many for that many aces. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't hand out bennies a lot, but that is one time when I do it. So uh -huh. 22. Um, Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so cool. as he leaps in, into the air, s trying desperately to claw something, the life out of Calvin, he cracks and collapses, but as he does, you run over and you see the, the badge shining in the light from everyone's reflected uh, cell phones, and you just run up and just hammer him right in the back of the neck as hard as you can, and you feel the flesh give underneath the hammer as the badge shoves itself into his neck, and you feel it sever something as his head just kind of lops over to the side, and he lies on the ground, the coal-burning eyes still gleaming in the night, and he turns and looks at you. The ley lines converge. The convergence returns! And as he says that, his body seizes up and the, his eyes burn bright with red light that shines out through the campsite and then he collapses and his eyes go dark. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, yo, what, what the fuck just happened? What was that? He, 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 he killed Kyle. Yeah, I, I, and uh, he, he attacked us. What? He went, what? He Look, like he went feral from that canned true. food it, or some it, shit. It, it, it's true. I, I saw it. I, I, I saw it. He was he was braining Kyle with a rock. I, I was I was watching from my tent. I I, I, I couldn't stop him. I was I was too scared. Okay. But they, All right. they came out. Everybody needs to call. Everybody needs to stay calm. All right. We we need to make sure everyone is here and and <laughs> the rest of us who are here are alive. We have to, we have to. We have to call some, we have to call the cops, we okay, have to call an on, ambulance, on, we have to do on. something. Yes, yes, all of those things are, are very, make sense. Our phones aren't gonna work here, and we don't have any daylight, and it's gonna be really not smart for us to move without Listen, the daylight. Not here, not here, that's right. Okay, but I I, I brought I brought a flashlight, uh, one of them high-powered ones, and I, 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 I'm I pretty good in the outdoors. Listen, um, Ariel, you got your phone. I can lead you, I think, back up the path, the, the way we came down here. There should be reception up by that, that, that logging trail where we got dropped off. I can just walk her up there, we can go together, and she can call the cops. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Go, go for it, man, okay. yeah, do it. Wait, before you go, shine the light on the prof professor. I, 
I don't. I don't know, Look man. I don't think anyone wants to see that. Look away and just shine it on it. Don't ever. You hear choruses from around. Like, don't do it, man. No, we man, don't want to see it. Sorry, everybody. Look away. We need to get some pictures. If he's still like he is, it could change. All right. All right, man. And he he shines the light on the professor, and you can see how distorted his flesh and body have gotten. Oh. I want to take a couple pictures. All right. So you snap a couple pictures with your cell phone, and uh, you hear a couple people just gasp or make like a muttered exclamation to themselves. Clearly not everyone looked away. All right, is that good? Are we good? Yeah, 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 we're fine. All right, okay, all right. That's that's enough of that. Uh, let's let's put like a blanket or a tarp over yeah, yeah, over yeah, the so bodies, that's okay? Right, yeah. I'll get, I'll get all right, I'm trying out. to keep it cool here, but let's just get this covered up, all yeah. right? Everybody, I think, should probably get like back in their tents or like just maybe everybody get in one person's tent. Everybody stay together. Ariel and I are gonna go, we'll, we'll call for help. We'll be back. Okay. All right, so everyone clusters up in their tents as Ariel and Derek take off. And a few hours later, you see flashlights coming through the woods and you hear uh, noises and radio sounds as authorities and EMTs have arrived to take over the scene. Everyone takes some time to take everyone's statement. You guys explain what happened. What do you tell the authorities happened? Uh, I think he went like rabbit or something with the food that he ate or I don't know. I don't know, it wasn't him. This is not what he was hey. like. Sorry, just a small note. Before the authorities got there, I want to have retrieved that badge. <laughs> oh, out from out of his, yes, neck. yes, yeah, it was in his neck, sure. I didn't mean go back out and find the no, last no, one. No, no, yeah, you can do it, you can do it, you can do that. It is covered in blood and and viscera, but you can wipe that off if you okay. want. Sorry, go ahead. Um. What are you telling them happened, that he, he went rabid, something, and, and attacked know. another student? As far as we could tell, but it definitely wasn't like him, so something was wrong. In the middle of the night, he was, we heard something being smashed and when we came out of our tent he uh, it seems like Kyle was dead and he was still hitting it yeah he came at us like he we, we didn't start that that he came at us yeah, it was like an animal they take your statements they take the statement of all of the other students assembled and the general consensus is that he went after Kyle and then turned on you and if it wasn't for the quick thinking of all of you guys he might have taken everyone else out in their sleep. The EMTs and the police escort you guys out of the woods. They drive you back to campus. They cover the bodies and load them onto the back of an ambulance. Later on, the obituary for Dr. Barton will read that he was struck by some sort of malignant brain tumor that had been growing in his head for longer than he was aware of it. And it had caused him to lose his mind and react violently. And that some students on a trip with him had been forced to attack him in self-defense in order to protect themselves and everyone else. But you guys know that that is not the entire story. And that is where we will end things tonight, except that we did unlock a taste of what's to come. What? So after you make it back to your rooms, the next day, Sawyer, you head back into your room. Oh, hey, you're back. How was your uh, I, camping I, trip? I don't want to talk about it. Oh yeah? Went weird? It didn't go well. And Randy uh, reaches into a desk drawer and pulls out a small handheld device and says, Hey, Sawyer, sleep, and presses a button. And instantly, Sawyer, your head drips down as you stay standing in the middle of your room. Okay. So, we've been through this before, Sawyer. Story time. 
Tell me everything that happened. And that what? is where we will end what? things. What? Thank you very much, all of what? you in the Alumni Association who have supported these young students in their sophomore year. They're so close, so close to surviving their sophomore year of college at ETU. Um, but we have seen a little bit of a taste of what's to come. So keep that in mind as we head into next week's season finale here on Wild Cards. We will have the full complement of East Texas University students here at the table next Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time here on Saving Throw. And we hope that you will join us for the end of their sophomore year or possibly their time in total oh at God. East Texas University. But don't worry, Dennis is gonna be fine. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for being here and uh, and playing tonight. Thank you very much to Tyler Rhodes Yay! for running everything behind the scenes. Big ups to Tyler. Oh, man, um, thank you to Dom for um, hopefully an not getting cursed by an yeah. ancient Egyptian curse. We and really if he does, if he make sure you get that stuff cleansed before you bring it back to the we rest of us. Here. We have enough. Oh my God. We can't be hunted down and killed by a mommy who wants our organs. Be oh sure guys to check out the Kickstarter for Carolina Game Table's new 5x5 table. You can enter exclamation mark Kickstarter in the chat and follow that link. They're great friends of the show here. Uh, that's Jody and Clint Black's company. Uh, some of the people who are behind Savage Worlds. And this is what they do in addition to that. And they mm -hmm. do it really well. So at least give them your eyeballs and spread the word <laughs> about uh, their Kickstarter project. And we will table. see you <laughs> next week for the season finale of wild cards, but until then, everyone, go Raven! Whoa. Go! <laughs>